Yo, 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 what up, what up, everybody? So uh, welcome to the session here today. We're going to have Nick Shaheen, lead trader from the Options Inner Circle chat room. We will be talking about option trade ideas, the stock market, the economy, the markets in general, and how you can make money out of this, even if you're new. Chris Chus, I see you, dude. What's going on? McAllison in the house. We got Vinny, Isaac, what's going on? Also, a big shout out to the folks out there on the YouTube side. So Johnny, good to see you here. Newton, Daniel, Tony, Yousef. All right, folks, listen, everybody calm down, calm down, okay? We got a great session packed for everybody here. So I want everybody to relax because it's gonna get hot today, okay? Give me a one in the chat if this is your first time in this session. Give me a two in the chat if you've been here before, okay? All right, we're gonna get it started, but everybody calm down, take a step back, all right? You know, we, we, we wanna make sure we, we address this the right way, all right? We got a ton of twos, a ton of ones. Patrick Mulligan in the YouTube chat. I see you, dog, what's up? Mikey Ray. All right, Heather, Stevie B, Jack, Jackie, Troy, what's up? All right, we got a, we got a bunch of people here. We have about like three, 400 people watching live right now, so we're gonna get this whole thing started now. Let's give a big shout out to the man of the hour, Mr. Nick Shaheen, lead trader, top educator, best friend from the options, inner circle chat room. Bring him on. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Hell yeah, what's going on, Nick? How you doing? Nah, I'm doing okay, struggling a little bit today. Hold on, let me take my safety piece. Listen, man, I don't know, well, Aside from the stock market, I don't know if you watch football, but yesterday LSU beat the shit out of Alabama. So big shout out to the boys at LSU. Go Tigers. No Bama fans allowed here. Okay. No Bama fans. I like Buck fans, but Nick, I know you just got off the session. Let's I, I, you know, yesterday, if the one team beat the shit out of the other one, I <laughs> beat the shit out of other people and other people beat the shit out of me. I, I had my gym sparring session yesterday. That's why my nose is a little crooked today. It was a rough day, but it was very fun. So I'm still a little woozy from that. Yeah. Um, what happened this morning is I got together with uh, about 70 of my closest friends from the inner circle and other places where we went over a list of stocks. As we do every Sunday, you know, part of the service is I do the homework so you guys don't have to. This time around, it was about 140 tickers and I recorded in three videos and I made it available. And I also delivered this spreadsheet where they can go ahead and click on the charts they want with my comments in here. Right. And I also do, delivered the comments live. Do you want to go ahead and just sh share your screen there so the folks can see it? Oh, yeah. I forget that it's not automatically shared. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. So, Nick, there's a lot of ones here. There's a lot of new people. And for some, I don't know, people put a three. I don't even know. We need. We, we need. What, what was the question? What was the question? So it's like one. If it's your first time in this session, put a one. If it's your second, if you've been here before, put a two. And some people put a three and a four. I don't even know what that is. That but... means they're probably members. Uh, if you're members, shout out. Well, you're here when you don't have to. You just left me. And you're yeah. with me. Not, you're with me more than nine hours a day. So let's let's back into. You should be seeing my screen. This is the yeah. list I was talking about that I, I delivered. Nick, I, I just want to apologize, though, for the sound, because I just moved into a new apartment here, and I'm at Twin Peaks. And you know the history that I have doing webinars at Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks. But uh, I apologize for the sound, just for everybody that's listening. Um, I'm pretty no much problem. Like, yeah, I'll, right. Anytime, anytime you need to mute yourself, I'll handle it. Uh, nothing I haven't done before. So, folks, this is the list I have shared with my members this morning. They got it delivered into the inner circle chat chat room, so it's there for them to look over all week long. Uh, it is a static scenario where um, you can click on the, the charts as they were today. And the comments, oh, don't touch that. So, and the comments, uh, and then the videos that go along with it. So we do, I do a lot of homework, so you guys don't have to. And where did I pick these stickers? Trust me, I do not track that thing, nor that thing. Uh, this one I definitely do. So these are the tickers that you, the members, have asked for. 
every Friday I send out a form, give me the tickers you want, and they give me tickers. Uh, this week, it was 140. There's probably a few more, but I had to cut it off at some point. Um, so, for example, every week for the last, I don't know, month and a half, I got, I got questions on Carvana, Carvana, Carvana. Every time I said, don't touch this, avoid, avoid. My answer was always avoid, 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 avoid. Boom, 40% or 35% on Friday after being down this much. So hopefully they listened. So we, I do homework um, for the simple only, only goal of trying to help us not make mistakes. So I can guarantee you, I can almost guarantee you that the whole list of people that are here today have are not in the habit of picking bad stocks. You're always stung by mistiming. So sometimes not every stock comes, investing for the long term is a fallacy. No, investing in the long term for uh, with a little bit of logic, okay, maybe. So you have to do a little bit of homework and Carvana was looking a little iffy from the financial perspective. So I would avoid it. Now the charts help a lot. So here's my day. I, I wake up on the West Coast in the threes before four o'clock. I do my homework. I share my homework with the members via a write-up. I tell them what the day is going to look like. I give them uh, the actual um, charts for the day. So I share all the major indices and a blurb about what to look for, support and resistance for those who are active. Okay, And then I go into the live room where it's not a chat room. It's where we meet. And I share my screens like you're seeing now, minus the camera. So you don't see me, you, you hear me, and you have my screens all day, every day, more than nine hours. I challenge you to find somebody out there that'll do that for you. I'm in there for the sole purpose of trying to help us make money. I track the action down to the 15 second charts. Yeah, we watch 15 second charts, I promise. Um, this was um, Friday. I promise you there were lines on the 15 second charts for opportunities. Um, and we nail them. Uh, at least we don't fall into short-term traps. Like we knew that was coming, it played out. We knew that was coming, it played out. We knew that was coming. That was a massive win for us. Uh, this was a half win and then it fizzled, but we got it back. So I also do iron condors that expire for maximum gains, hopefully every week. Um, if not, I manage the, for example, two Fridays ago, I got stuck short because I did an iron condor. If you remember two Fridays ago, things went crazy, right? And, uh, so I lost money that day, Friday, but I rolled my loss into Monday. And as soon as we opened Monday, I got all my money back and then some, so with proper management. So let me delete that, all of those, cause I won't need them Monday. We'll start fresh. And just well. really quick, there's a lot of people asking questions here. Folks, Nick Shaheen has a live trading room. I didn't mention this before, my bad. But Nick Shaheen has a live trading room where he's there the entire day, oh, Monday yeah. to Friday and Sundays. The, like literally, Wait. Don't, don't even go to church. Go to Nick Shaheen's session. Oh, sh All no, right? <laughs> no, no. I am not asking for you to leave God for this. No, no. I don't want that juju on my back. <laughs> Whether you believe in God or not is not on me. But I would love to have you if you want. And he here's why. If you can't make it, I'm going to record it so you can watch it on Sunday evening. Okay, so here's the deal. This, these are live pictures from comments from my live room. Not live pictures, snapshots from comments from my live room. And you can't fake this stuff out. Some of, some of, the, some of the people are in here. Um, so check this out. This is a uh, comment like, this guy makes a living uh, trading. That's his only source of income. He's in there. He's in, out, in, out, in, out a hundred times a day. I can't do that, but he shares. So here's Pada saying, thank you, James, for giving me a 50% win on Tesla out. Those are fast rate. James says, no problem. Make the spread. They have, okay. So somebody, I, I, I posted the spread and somebody couldn't read it. So I just made it bigger on that day. At that moment, we had almost 300 people and uh, chat was buzzing. And it's a whole bunch of fun every day. That I, I went back. When was that? This was November 3rd. So Thursday. So this is also Thursday. Um, look at your drawing, Nick. Somebody's telling me, Mark, uh, reminding me to look at my drawing, how accurate that was. If you can't see it, you can see I drew an arrow like this. And that's exactly what the chart did. So you can make money with those comments short term, intraday, in and out, in and out. 
Yes, they, the drawings are super accurate because they're self-fulfilling prophecies. Look at this one. This was the opposite. So um, it's okay. So somebody's saying nice here. So Rocky's saying it's it's the reason we have three hundred of us here. Technical analysis beyond expertise and what you need. Somebody says, dude, I've learned so much from being here. Joining you all has been one of the better decisions I've ever made this year. Those are not my comments. This is B saying about Rocky. So I take snapshots and then I go back in time to see if I can repeat that from older sp scaling out of BA. This breakout in BA was a monster win. I wasn't looking. Somebody said, hey, can you chart BA for me? So I dropped everything and looked at BA and it looked like it was going to break out. I promise you, I had the chart there. We can go check it out. And boom, this happened. They made, I believe, 200% on their money or 120, 130, something like that. They made money within minutes. Um, I made 200%. That was Ryan. Ryan shares his trades too. And the trades, the kind of trades that you can follow. I'm not that fast. James is fast. I'm not that fast. Ryan, swing trades. So if he wants to get short or long, he buys a put or a call out three weeks. So you don't have to be a super fast person. And here's James says, damn, 200%. That was amazing. People helping people. Okay. And when was that? November 1st. How many people were there? 315. Last week, we had 330, 340. Um, and when was that? October 26th. What was the comment? This room is the best place to trade. Luis. Turns out Luis and I have the exact same taste in music. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so we chat. Anyway, so that's the live room. What happens there? I log in. I'm live. You watch my screen. We spend all day to see if we can trade. Let's say you can't be there. You have a quick question. You can pop in, ask me that question. I'll answer it to you live. Let's say you can't even do that. Well, I have a chat room for you. That's not the live room. This is a static chat room. Here are questions that just came in 9.37 this p.m. So that's about 40 minutes ago. Uh, somebody says, I can't get, I'm not getting emails. I said, you don't need emails. I post everything here twice a day. All you have to do is come here and, and read my comments. And you're in like Flynn. You don't need an email set up. Oh, great. They said, awesome. So all day here, people hang around and chat. Uh, I just shared my three videos. They're in here. Um, this is not my chart. So this is Doc sharing his chart and, and chatting it up. This also is not my chart. This is also Doc. So there are a lot of debates here that are not from me, that are not from me. And they go on here all day, every day. These are not mine. Somebody is posting. Swang is posting his p and I don't like when they do that. But anyway, so if you have a question that you don't want to mess around with a live room, you pop into your Benzinga chat room, the inner circle chat room. This one's available to you. I went with dark theme. You can pick light, light theme, light theme. So we're the goal. The goal is to not make easy mistakes. The only way you can make that happen, you have to strategize. So let's go back to that point. First of all, intraday, we have the live room to strategize. And you have me to help you organize. Now, on Sunday, I have this to help you strategize on every, every stock. But guess what? Not one of these stocks trades in a vacuum. What does that mean? Let's say you see an opportunity in the Airbnb, which, by the way, I traded it winningly during this dr drop for the group. Let's say that you want to um, um, trade Airbnb, and you have an unbelievable thesis on it. And if you don't know what the market's going to do, Airbnb can't trade on its own. It has to follow the market. So this is the big picture for the market. So I strategize on that for us when Sunday night, tonight, I will come back to work, uh, do a video about eight to 10 minutes long about the week. And believe me, it's going to be an important week. We will find out if uh, anyway, we have the elections in the US by Tuesday, Wednesday, we will have an idea of who controls what and where. And the markets will most certainly react to that. How? I don't know. We'll see. I have the lines. We have base, This is the S&P SPX. Okay, if you didn't know, the SPX is the actual index. The SPY is the ETF that tracks the index. You can't buy the SPX. You can buy calls and puts on it. So you have the opportunity here to fill a gap below at 36.10 or above at 40.95. So we either rally to 40.95, that green arrow, or we retest this line right there, 
this one, battle two. Battle one, the Bulls won last week. Even though the weak outcome was red, the Bears lost. They had the opportunity to pummel the Bulls, and they let them off the rope. So it's like uh, an MMA fighter had the other guy, person, rocked, and then decide to grapple with them. You have them rocked. You don't grapple. You keep hitting. Nope. The, the Bulls were, were wobbled, and the Bears said, oh, let's just mess around for a little bit. So... Also, the VIX crashed with stocks. There's something going on in the market. And let me tell you, now we're talking big picture. So you're going to have a preview of what I'm going to discuss with tonight. Uh, number one, the VIX, two days in a row, crashed with stocks. The stocks fell off a cliff. Remember when Powell said, blah, 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 whatever? The VIX, that's supposed to measure volatility, crashed with stocks. That is odd. It repeated the process on Friday. That was also odd. And Thursday, I think, as well. So there's something going on with the fear measurement. There's another um, hint of good news. Crypto is showing extreme strength. I'm long crypto. I've shared it. Uh, we nailed crypto from last year, from November of last year. We just freaking nailed it. So anyway, I'm long from the very bottom in crypto. My Ethereum entry point was like 880. It's now 16, 1700, whatever it is. Solana 2740, to give you an idea how well we nailed it. Beto, we've made money from Beto, which is Bitcoin tracker for the last month. Easy money. So they're showing extreme strength. If Bitcoin pops above the 21, whatever it was, 21.4 recent fail, it can get to 25. It could teeter there and then get to 33, teeter there and get to 40. My point is there's something going on in the riskiest assets, perceived risky asset. Scared money doesn't hide in risky assets. So there might be something coming that the bears are not seeing. I'm open to both scenarios, don't care much. I'm a bullish guy, I want the markets to do well, but within reason. So if we hit 4,100, look at what I say. We have a possible rally to 3,900, use it to fix broken trades. So if you have longs and they got a lot better here, you should take that opportunity to get out because this could fail and we will lose this and go to 3,000 in the SPX or lower. So there is that scenario too. Don't be blind. This is possible. That's my note for my team. Use this to fix trades. And if you want to chase it on the breakout, restart new ones to cover the gap. Don't risk waiting it out and then recover, uh, losing this back down. There's a gap here. There's a gap here. Which one first? Maybe both. Maybe we fall on a uh, headline and then we come back and fill the upper one as well. And be open to new highs by December and January. Be open to it. It could happen. Nobody's looking at it, but I've been talking about it for a while. So we have daily, intraday, um, intraday action. We We chart the stuff using a shorter term uh, candles. Here's a uh, less of five minutes candle, one minute candle, and then we go down to 30 seconds and 15 seconds whenever we're engaged. Because why? Because we have four times as much data as the other person we're trading against. We're, we're bulletproof as much as possible intraday with picking ex entry and exit. You will see people posting comments like, we have one person, two or three people that are total uh, VWAP people, you know, so volume weighted average, whatever. And so they're com constantly posting their comments based on that. They tell us where there's likely to be support and where there's likely to be resistance. I'm super strong with the levels and the moving averages thing. Other people are super strong with Fibonacci levels. They carry Fibonacci levels months back. Uh, we have people looking out for trade ticks, which are trading the algo flow, money flow. There's, I mean, for us to miss something, uh, we would need a dozen or few people to be asleep at the same time. So <laughs> it is going to be pretty uh, bulletproof, solid, as bulletproof as possible. We're awake. We're looking for fast opportunities. Get in, get out. Not me. I can't do it. I'll mess it up. I prefer selling risks. So when the market opens, I look for <laughs> selling uh, credit call spread and credit put spread and trying to make money off of that. I showed a few, I shared a few winners on Friday. Even with 
I don't know, 25 minutes to go. Somebody said, can you give me an iron condor for 25 minutes? I was like, whoa, okay, here's one. It pays a dollar 60, dollar 70. I can't remember. So if they did one contract, they risked $170. Sorry, they collected $170 and risked the balance between that and five. And within minutes, they had made a uh, dollar 20, 120 of it. I said, close it close it, close it. If they closed it, they made money right off the bat with out of thin air. Um, so those opportunities are there and they don't need you to be super fast because you sell something and you wait for time to kill it in your favor and it dies for maximum gains for the seller, which is you. During the Fed event, the headline came out, the Fed did whatever, the market did whatever. And I read the comments and I said, this is extremely bearish. This is what I heard Powell say. I heard him say, uh, we underestimated how long we're going to continue raising rates and how high we're going to go. Although the pace of increase of those rates is going to slow down. What did the market hear? They, they're changing soon. He said the pace of increase is going to slow down maybe in the next meeting or next, the, the one after, which means he won't be adding to that 75 bips and he may be open to dropping it to 50 bips. But he said... He's going to be raising rates for much longer than he thought in September and much higher than he thought in September. So that was super bad news. And it was like, how is the market rallying? This is incredibly bad. And then you saw what happened. So we are on the ball. Fundamentally, technically, we're aware. We're looking for opportunities. We may, I, I made this up and uh, I, we call it the Yeezy <laughs> because... It's the easy credit spread that delivers a crap ton of money if you're just patient and it's an intraday trade. Basically, we, I study the options and I try to guesstimate where we're going to close for the day. And then I'll say, if I know that the market's going to close here, I can take a trade that allows me to make a lot of money if I can nail it within reason. So let's say with three hours to go in a day, if I can say the market's going to close right here, I set up this iron condor and um, via these two boxes. So if the market closes inside the green box, I would make $400. So <laughs> out of thin air per contract. And if I do 10, that's $4,000. Um, and then I usually close it early. As soon as it drops half, I just buy it back to close it. Um, it we call it the easy, but it's a simple iron condor. The easy because it's easy money quickly if you just don't make mistakes. And um, it's not always easy. And if you hang on to it for the last minute, you might get bit. So all these opportunities are there. Where? In the live room, live room, which is part of the service. No, this is extra. Part of the service is me having you in a chat room setting, me sharing my write-ups with you, one a day almost with a trade that does not require for you to be there. Example, American Express fell for reasons, ABC, whatever. I did the homework. I said, you know what? I'd like to catch that falling knife. Here's a trade set up for you. I should have brought the table here. Um, let me see if I can bring it as I'm talking. So um, mm -hmm. let me see here. Five or three. So I would send out a, um, okay, here, I'm going to bring it. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but I'm going to bring it anyway. This is a trade log from uh, from Benzinga. So I'm not going to show you the open trades. These I'm going back in the page. So these are trades. This one's going to be a loser trying to short the dollar. What a crazy idea, Nick. Um, Beto, that's uh, Bitcoin. So selling puts, buying calls, selling put spreads, catching knives this way is super easy. This is the actual log of the results. 100% of, of gains, 100% of maximum gains. So uh, this one was actually a green one, but I didn't want to post it as green because we have to roll something. So I didn't want to claim it because somebody might have been stuck. So we do good work. These trades in that log, all you have to do is just check the messages once a day and you can take it. And uh, th it does not need babysitting. That's how I started with Benzinga about 10, maybe 12 years, 11 years ago. In 2011, or however far that, however far back that is. So I was looking for ways to make money that don't require me to having to guess where the stock is going. I would say, okay, where is the stock not going? And sell credit put spread there and try to make money off of it. Um, 
Sometimes it goes well, other times it doesn't. Recently, somebody said uh, they wanted to short Caterpillar. I was like, what? If you're going to short Caterpillar, you should probably also sell the credit foot spread. And uh, I did a trade that that person or somebody today said, um, my credit foot spread didn't fill. I think they decided not to short it, but they worded that way so that they don't feel guilty. Um, this was the trade setup. Uh, Caterpillar was here somewhere and they wanted to short it. I was like, don't short it. It's a pretty strong stock in a tough market. Uh, at least do another credit put spread. So I collected a dollar ten. I took the trade. I collected a dollar ten. This side of the trade is under fire. It hasn't lost yet. It loses if this goes to here and closes. Um, it doesn't lose if at, on expiration day, which is twelve nine, Caterpillar is at or below the uh, sold two forty. Uh, the break even is um, two forty one and change for me, and the break even here is one eighty eight and change. So if Caterpillar stays between these two boxes, I win. So that's the kind of trade I like. It doesn't require me to be watching every tick. It does require me to pay attention to my trades at least once a week, a couple times a week, once a day, however uh, many chances I get. Sorry. And um, so if you're like that kind of trade, this is what it looked like the day I set it up. Caterpillar was here, about 218 it looks like. And now it's about $8 higher, $9 higher. Um, this is my actual trade. Credit put spread, that's this box right there. Credit call spread, that's this box right there. How about, how about we do this? Let me recap what I just blabbed about for 27 minutes. I have a service with Benzinga. I've been working with them for over a decade. We do good work, and we are probably the number one service there, although I can't prove it. I don't have the back-end system. But from the feedback, I have a sneaky suspicion we are in count. And we are doing it right because people keep coming back. If you're in the inner circle with me, you're going to get every write-up I make. And that's two a day. You're going to get Sunday, full two-hour video, full two-hour webinar free. Look at the thumbs up coming up. <laughs> full two-hour webinar free. And a video at night that gives you the strategy for the, I call it the strategic market update. If you're trading without one, you're crazy. In this market, don't trade alone. I promise you, you will do better in a group. You don't have to get to my group. I would love to have you in my group. Find a group that suits you. Maybe you hate me or you don't like the style I do. Find a group that helps you because trading alone is nuts these days. It's easier to not make mistakes when you have a group of people, a bunch of people looking out for you. So it, all these write-ups are available to you. On top of it, if you're still unsure of yourself, I have a chat room for you where you can pop in and ask questions anytime, 24-7. I'm not waiting for you to pop in, but if I see a question on the weekend, I'm going to answer it. Otherwise, during the weekday, I post there everything, everything that's not super fast. Okay, And you can talk to other people here. You can DM me, anything you want. And if that's not enough, I said to myself, what else can I do for these people? I finally, last year, I started the live room where I'm there for you. Over nine hours a day. You don't believe me? Log in. I can show you the logs. It's nine hours and 30 minutes, nine hours and 10 minutes, nine hours and 50 minutes. So long that every day the, the, the platform kicks me out because I'm there too long. It's not built for me to stay there more than six hours. So I have to log back in. It's like a 10-second procedure. So if you want uh, a group that's fighting for you, this is it. Oh, and when you sign up, you get this. You can you have access to a library of videos. What is this? Let's say you're new to options. Let's say you don't know anything about options. I'm going to jump into options in a little bit. Um, what is a put option? This video about 10 minutes long will tell you that. What is a call option? This minute about 12 minutes long will tell you that. This video. This one tells you what is a spread. Another 10 minutes. This is what is a credit spread. Shorter because this is just different version. Introduction. Um, what is a cash settled index? This explains it. Like, why is the SPX different than the SPY? Uh, lesson on breakouts and swing trading. How do we pick a type of trade? Kind of like a suitability thing. Um, I forgot what this was. Trade setup information. So we keep adding to it. The other day, somebody wanted to know more about iron condors. They posted and they, they came in here and said, Nick, I'm new. I'm a little lost about iron condors. I went and recorded a video for iron condors. Uh, I promise you it's here. I think it's called ICZ. There it is. 
So I did one and I use it often enough to where I have a shortcut for it. So now somebody said somebody new, I'll say, here, watch this video first and then come back and talk to me about iron condors. So they go and watch it and come back and say, okay, I get it now. Or I say, uh, they say, I don't understand this part or that part. And I explain it. Um, you just have to know uh, to set up your account properly. Um, I'm not going to recommend a broker because they all suck at some point and they're all good at, at other points. Um, I use E-Trade and Thinkorswim and I just opened an account with Tastyworks, which seems pro uh, promising. Uh, I haven't funded it yet, so I can't speak to its effectiveness, but um, they do a lot for crypto and that's pretty good. Somebody asked earlier about crypto. What do I think? I think crypto is essential. I think if you're holding out on crypto because you hear smart people like Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon trash it, I think they're wrong in a big way. Respect to their brilliance. I think they're being stupid about it. Think about it. Everything in your life is going digital, right? Money will be digital. Whether you believe in coin A or coin B, the crypto technology is going to be in your life on a daily basis in your lifetime. Um, we are going to be dealing with crypto on a daily basis. I would suggest you start dabbling in it. The easiest money I made this year and the biggest wins I made this year were in crypto and there were zero stress with it. Zero. Just plain, simple logic, a little bit of planning, and I even earn interest on the stuff. They don't call it interest, but I have. The government kind of ruined that part. I was getting 10% for a stable coin on a yearly basis, and now it's down to four. I hate it. It was a great gravy train until it ended in April on tax day. They now require you to register uh, in order to, because they, the government wants to know that you know what you're doing with crypto. All they wanted is to collect the list of all the crypto people and just uh, hound them because they are scared shitless about what crypto can do for them. Anyway, to them. So don't be so obtuse about it. If Jamie Dimon makes fun of Bitcoin and says it's a horrible holder of value, he needs a new calculator. Um, he says fake. The fake argument, or I guess we're talking about crypto now. The fake argument is silly. Listen to this. Um, the, the, I, I use art. Art is fake because it's man-made. Crypto is fake because it's man-made, right? How is that different? You say, oh, art is different. Okay, let's, let's, let's go with that. Mona Lisa, worth probably mil, mil, hundreds of millions of dollars. I can't imagine the word, probably priceless. The actual Mona Lisa is priceless. What about people who pay 50000 for a reproduction of the Mona Lisa? Is it not fake? You can't tell me that that's not fake. It's 100% fake. A person copied another person's artificial thing. It wasn't there. They picked it off a tree. They drew it up. People said, holy crap, that is beautiful. I will pay a million. No, I will pay 10 million. Does it matter whether you like it or not? Let's say they're bidding it up and you have the opportunity to buy it here and sell it there. Whether you like it or not, would you not do it? Of course you would do it. And I would. So fake is a, is a silly argument not to participate in the most profitable asset class bar none in the last 10 years. If you bought it last December, last November, you lost your shirt. But if you used usually just level-headed entry and exit points, it's the easiest money you can make. You just have to be smart about it. Value is in the eye of the beholder. And here's the thing, Ryan. So I'm glad you said that. Gold, the only reason gold has value is because we humans love it. And we want more of it, and there isn't enough of it to go around. So demand is putting pressure on price to always keep it up. At some point, gold was just a yellow pebble on the ground. Somebody picked it up and said, damn, that looks pretty. Hey, want to trade me your goat for this beautiful rock? You can melt it and smelt it and do whatever you want to it and shape it into things you put in your ear and 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 give you to, 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 to your family to wear. Uh, up until that point, it was just a yellow rock on the ground. How is this concept different? Whether you believe in Bitcoin or not, it's a thing. It exists. And there are hundreds of millions of people who want it. And there isn't enough of it. It's even more rare than gold. So 
supply and demand will prop up the value. There'll be, there'll be value in Bitcoin for as long as people believe in it. And believe me, the fans of Bitcoin are extreme hardcore fans. You try to break their spirit, you're going to lose, guaranteed. If you are in the inner circle, will you have access to sell options? If, Sergey, if you're in my inner circle, if you read my morning note, you will have a link and a password to my live room. I think that's what you're asking. Yeah, you have me. You have all of my attention all day, every day. You want to spend all day with me, Sergey? I would love to have you. How are you thinking about the CPI next week? It's horse shit. The CPI is horse shit. Yes. The, the number is ridiculous, first of all. Second of all, let's use logic. The dude in charge, the chief moron in charge, that is Powell, um, is using the same horseshit reports this year in order to make decisions to fix the horseshit report problem that came up from last year. He's using the same broken reports that got us in trouble last year to try to fix his mistake from last year. Who cares what the CPI says? I know how much I'm paying for milk. That's all I need. I know how much the car costs. I know how much this costs. I don't need that. So check this out. He already just said he's going to be in it for months. Who cares what the CPI says? I can tell you what it's not going to say. It's not going to say, ooh, inflation disappeared. If it does, then go ahead and wait for the CPI. If it doesn't, what's it going to tell you? It's not going to say anything. It's going to be a little bit better than expected, a little bit worse than expected. People are going to freak the fudge out over nothing. He's going to be raising rates for a long time. That's what he just said. And the market's still okay with it. Who cares what the CPI says? Please stop trading headlines. You do not need the headlines. I draw lines and they come to fruition, headlines or not. It's crazy stupid that we're glued to the CPI and it's not your fault. That's how, if you watch CNBC, if you watch all these other news agencies, they're all focusing your attention on things that make them money, not make you money. I promise you, CNBC's best interest is CNBC, not you. The fact that they highlight an, a report is to sell your eyeballs to the advertisers, like the Fed minutes. They happened three weeks ago. And then in three weeks from now, they're going to sell us on the all important Fed minutes and do a whole week around it. It's events that happened three weeks ago. We know the outcome of them. How could that be relevant? Anyway, um, listen, the CPI is transitory. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I tell you one thing though. Let me, speaking of transitory, listen, this is a fun conversation. Screw the investment. This is a fun conversation. It's going to open up your eyes. Listen, so transitory, they've sold us on it. Inflation is transitory. I didn't know what they meant until last year, late last year. And 99.99% .99 of the people don't know what transitory means. Did you know what it meant? Think about it. They, when they said transitory, 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 it wasn't the fact that the inflation was transitory. The rate of increase in inflation was the transitory part, that they thought that the ascending, how fast inflation was rising, that was the transitory, that was temporary. That's what they were saying, that this steep climb in inflation, they thought would die early. So and now they need to know that the, they, use, they need to use the transitory word to how high they're increasing rates. So he should have said, my rate increases are transitory. Then that would be, <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> my mother is in Lebanon and she's calling me on something. I have no idea what. So um, so the, the, the idea is that he, what he just said, that his rate hikes are transitory. So his rate of increase is going to slow down. <laughs> Nick, really I'm quick. I'm sorry, man. mom. Sorry. What, what, what? What's going on, Nick? <laughs> My mother is trying to call me from Lebanon. So. Okay, no worries. No worries. Look, I got to answer a couple of questions here. Maybe you can give her a quick WhatsApp call. But anyways, I, I have a couple of questions from the members, Nick. I just want to go over them really quick before we do keep on with the session. 
folks, thanks a lot for the questions. And we're, trust me, we're going to get into Powell. We're only getting started. Don't get Nick too heated up right now, okay? <laughs> we're, not, we're not even halfway there, okay? So, yes, everybody that joins will get a laptop. There is a 30-day money-back guarantee. The schedule is Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. Also Sundays from 10.30 to 1 p.m. Eastern. Again, you have Nick Shaheen literally six days out of the seven days a week. He doesn't even rest on Sundays when God said to rest. This man knows no boundaries. He will be there for you when you need him, okay? So, yes, everybody gets a laptop. Everybody has a 30-day money-back guarantee. Um, next question, the chat room of the schedule is Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 5 p.m. Eastern, and Sundays, 10.30 to 1 p.m. And the price at renewal is going to be the same next year, 70% off. It's not going to change you. If you have questions on a laptop, Barry, um, my suggestion is to reach out during regular office hours um, because obviously here it's Sunday and it's just me and Nick. Next thing would be that uh, make sure to fill out the form once you sign up, where you fill out the address. If you've never signed up the form, you can't even expect a laptop because there's no way to send it to you if there's no address. So make sure you, you actually fill out the form so that we can send you the laptop. And we have our next question here. Is this good for beginners? Nick, I'll let you take that one. Um, yeah, somebody's saying more than I expected. There you go. <laughs> Nick goes off the handle. Um, beginners, I welcome beginners. I don't have an official class from a like from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. But if you're willing to learn, it's a learning experience the whole time. I promise you, I'm going to make you a promise. Listen, it doesn't get more honest than this. If spend a couple of days with me, you will sense the the honesty level in, in this group. So I promise you one thing, you will be a better trader in my group. I guarantee it. I don't care what level you're at. If you're a beginner, you're not wasting money. I promise. If you're a pro, you're going to love it. If you're in, the, in between, you're going to love it even the most. So if you've dabbled in options and lost, you're going to level up. There's going to be a few aha moments where you go, what the hell was I thinking? If you want to know what options are, join. I'll direct you to these videos first, and we'll discuss them thereafter. If you are a confident trader, you just want to hang out and be more accurate and find out new ways and new technologies, join. I do not think you will be disappointed. And here's what I believe they're offering you a 30-day 30 30 day, uh, money-back guarantee. I love that 30 days because they used to do it seven days, I think. And for seven days, if, I'm, if I've just spent over $1,000, I would want to like rush deciding right away. I want you to take all 30 days, 29.99 to really get into the group because you're going to jump in the first day and you're going to be overwhelmed with what's going on. I mean, I'm having four or five different conversations at the same time and it seems like a mess, but a couple of days there, you get the hang of it. And then I start talking to you and I say, focus, focus, focus on what is relevant to you. You can ignore the rest. So if we're talking fast in and out, go take a break, walk the dog. I do uh, live um, lessons during those days because something comes up. Okay, so how do you want to do this? There's high implied volatility. How do I handle that? Well, you handle it by using the difference in implied volatility. So I would go in and I tell them, this is my trading platform, my training trading platform. So if a stock is reporting earnings um, this week, then this week's options would have a huge implied volatility. So you, you don't buy stuff. Like if somebody who, who reported on Thursday night, whatever a stock it is, um, Twilio. So if somebody bought Twilio um, options for Friday, they probably made money on the, put, on the downside, but they, they overpaid almost three times. The, the going rate, all for the privilege of that one tick, the open tick. So why not go out three weeks, make the same bet for one third of the cost, not the absolute cost, but the going rate. Like if I'm buying a shoe here, a pair of shoes right here, if they tell me you come pick it up next week, we'll charge you half. Would you not do it? Or one third in two weeks, would you not do it? That's the same concept. I'm buying, buying the shoe I'm paying three times because I want it right here, right now, versus I can buy the same shoe later. Anyway, 
um i've just sh so the 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 concept of what kind of trades for example airbnb fell off a cliff right i said okay i'm willing to take a risk let's go there i'm glad you asked so let's go for the question it says can you give me an Stephen? thank you can you give me an example of your trades for people who have to work and they cannot be in the live room okay perfect so airbnb let's go there good company good business i think they're kicking tail I tried to book one for Arizona for um, um, Thanksgiving to visit family, and you can't find one. Okay, so this is uh, the dip that happened. So I said, okay, so I'm going to take a credit put spread. So what does that mean? Uh, let's let's chalk up, annotate. So in options, if you don't know what options are. Um, they're basically contracts uh, that that award the buyer the right to do something, okay? So let's say you love Apple and you want to buy Apple shares, but you don't want to fork over 100 shares times the cost of Apple stock right now with all this tumult, you know, all these crazy things going on, elections, blah, blah, blah. So what if you can lock your price at a certain level? Let's say you love Apple right here. You say, you know what? I don't want to shell out the whole price of the stock. How about if I lock my price? So that's why there are options. So you go in and you buy one thing from the options world, and it's called the call option. You spend a fraction of what you would cost spend on buying the whole lot. And uh, But now it's time sensitive. So you're basically locking your price for Apple. And let's say you're right that Apple was a good buy and Apple does that. You own the right to buy it here. You locked yourself in. So that is a call option. So it's a contract between you and the seller. The seller better have shares. Otherwise, they're going to have to go out and buy it here. They're short. Now, the flip side. Let's say you own Apple and you're a little bit worried, right? And you don't want to sell them. You love them, the shares. So what do you do? You go out and buy something else called a put option. And this gives you the right. You don't have to. Um, collect, uh, a, a, a stick somebody with your shares. So the person that sells you that put, they're saying, listen, I know you have 100 shares of Apple. I would love to have them at this level. And you pay them money. So they're your all state. If Apple does this, they're, they're obligated to buy them from you at that price that you guys agreed on. So I buy a call option. I lock my price to buy op Apple stock. I, I, I buy a put option, I lock my price on the sale if I want to, if I want to. Uh, so those are options, right? So in Airbnb's case, I can't tell you that Airbnb is going to do this after the drop, but I could tell you that I'm willing to take a risk that it's not going to do that. Let me rephrase. It's easier for me to say that Airbnb is not likely to do this then it is likely to do that. I'm not saying it can't do that, but I'm not as comfortable saying that as I am. It's a good business. It has support here. It has support here. Of course, if this support fails, it will do that. But I'm willing to take the risk down here. So I'm leaving this whole area as a buffer. And I collected a credit for it. And that credit is profitable already. So what do I need to win? Nothing. If it stays, if it rallies, I win. If it doesn't rally, I win. If it falls a little bit, I win. If it falls a lot of it, I could lose some money. And even when this happens, there's ways out of it. On 1021, the, ex the monthly expiration, um, they, um, I had three trades, three, three trades where price did fall through. And with proper risk management, there was no damage done. And the damage was only temporary. Even in the, in the one where it was 108, 106, seven credit put spread for Amazon. If you got assigned at 108, the next day you could have sold them at 113 or whatever it was. So even if you mismanaged it, you could have made, made money. So that's the kind of trade where you look it over, you say, yeah, okay, I like it. I'll modify it a little bit this way or that way to suit your own personal style. And um, you wait. So what kind of delivery is that? That's about 12 to 13% um, reward on the risk. So what does that mean? If I risk $1,000 in that trade, it will deliver me 13, 12 to 13% on that 1,000. Typically, if you go out and spend $1,000 for shares of Airbnb, same risk, 
to get the same performance I'm getting, 13%, you would need a 13% rally, which may or may not come. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if 13% will come. Maybe it will. But I'm more comfortable saying that it's not going to crash even more or lower. That's the kind of trade. Repeat this, these comments on AXP, uh, GL, uh, Costco, SPX, and SPY earlier. Here are a couple of fun trades I just did. Um, not from me. So I'm in the live room. I think Bill comes in. I'm ready to go along the UNG. No, actually, he's, Bill says, I don't know why I'm saying it that way. He, wa- he goes, what do you think of boil? I was like, what is boil? That sounds horrible. So it turns out the boil is the, the leverage version of UNG, natural gas. And now I know from my friends that natural gas is an extremely wild trade. So I knew there was like, uh-oh, I better do some homework. So I went to boil. I'm still answering your question there, Mike. Mike, was it? Stephen, I forgot who asked it. Anyway, um, so they, they told me I'm looking to get long. I was like, okay, that looks crazy. It's natural gas and it's three times leveraged. So whenever every time it says ultra, that means it, it's super leverage, which makes the options pretty questionable. But it's profitable if you can withstand the risk. So I looked into it on multiple time frames. I said, okay, so the bears are kind of in charge, but it looking they're looking to uh, what is happening with these volume profiles i guess i need to something happened in my setup really weird anyway so i went long i said you know what i like that and um, i offered him a position a, a scenario to go long i said you can sell put spread or buy calls or call spreads or buy shares or a combination of all of that and i shared the specific and i said you know what i also like ung for that reason in fact i like it better because it's a more stable uh, index, if you can say that, ETF. So I chose personally UNG, and I shared my trade, and it's played out. I can close it now for maximum gains or close to it, or let it die for maximum gains. And those who bought calls, I think, can ride it all the way up to here. Can. I don't know. There's going to be sellers in here. So I like the book early, but the target one is in this area with a lot of resistance here. So I shared that trade. You didn't need to be glued to the computer. If you logged in in the middle of the day, the day I shared it, which was October 19th, you could have uh, you know, read it and decided by the next day, oh, okay. In fact, if you did it the next day, you did better than me because the next day that sucker fell 5%. Let me see if I can pick it up. Right there. Uh, here, we fell 5%. So I was in trouble. Somebody came in. Hey, what did you do with your trade? I was like, nothing. I just opened it yesterday. What do you mean? What did I do? Do I use Elliott Wave? Uh, so Renee, I'll I'll come to that in a second. Uh, hey, Asif, I appreciate it. See, that's not my. I did not pay Asif to say that. <laughs> I swear. Uh, can I show you the chart of Apple? I can't show you that, Hector. So let me answer then for Renee. Do I use Elliott Wave? Okay, my number one tool are my eyeballs. All I need to trade is me looking left on the chart. I don't need anything. If you tell me you cannot use any technicals, I will do just as well, okay? Um, All I need at any point in time, at any time frame, if you give me the spy, I can tell you what not to do where. I don't need Elliott Wave. I don't need crap. I just need my eyeballs and I look left. When we get to here, I'll tell you it's not a time to go long until you take that out by the dip. So on in this occasion right here, I would say, okay, we're running into resistance. So buy the dip if it comes to try to ride it out or chase the rip if it happens. So this is your deciding factor. If you're fast, you wait for the breakout to chase it. I'm not that fast. I'd rather buy the dip into a swing trade opportunity. I know this is support, Elliott Wave or not. Now you can find Elliott Wave to draw you 6 million things. My experience, I do have tools. Um, I use um, harmonics to find me trades because like this red thing, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, This is very similar to Elliott Wave. Regardless of what tool you use, if they're good, they're going to lead you to the same truth. There's only one truth, the price, right? So they're all pointing to the same direction. Whether you use Elliott or not, you're going to get there. Now, advice on Elliott, don't dabble in it either become super confident or follow and pay somebody who knows you will lose your shirt on Elliott wave 
because you will win, 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 and then be so confident you will lay a big bet and it'll bite you in the ass because when it loses, it loses big. So my advice, here's if you nail it on Elliott Wave for like a week, stop. Switch to something else. <laughs> Take the other side. Um, nobody wins that well too long. If you, if, if you follow a famous or two Elliott Wave people during the downturn, the recent downturn that we had, they had great calls, great calls, great calls, and then they lost you a crap ton of money, right? <laughs> um, don't overstay your welcome. What are harmonics? Uh, harmonics, uh, so you have technical analysis. It's very basic. For me, I use plain, simple English to explain it, and it's so beautiful. It's not even funny. It was like eye-opening for me. Wow, I couldn't believe it was that easy. And then you can complicate your life however much you want to complicate it. Okay. I'm recently adding a new thing to my repertoire, which is the wolf wave. I don't need it. But boy, is it nice to use a new thing, right? So uh, here's here's a scenario. The, the harmonics, it's basically there are mathematical relationships that make up six or seven. I can't remember. Six or seven. Hold on. These These are them. There are seven plus a cipher, I think. So these are patterns. And they look like either W's or M's. And their names are funny. Alt, Bat, Bat, Crab, Gartley, Barfly, Deep Crab, and Shark. And um, for it to be correct, you have to go, you have to have these numbers, the, the, the relationship between this point and that point, this point and that point, this and that, and these two points, they have to be within tolerances that are tight. You can't mess around with it. So there's no way for me to learn to do this on the fly. The, the solution is to pay software that does that. The software is usually expensive, about $800, $900, maybe $1,000. But it's worth every penny in my book. It's not a trade alert. If you see this and you go short because this says maybe you should short, you're going to lose. I guarantee it. That's not how you use it. This is just for the pattern to bring your, eye, your attention to that formation. And then how to use it they, later is the trick. And I've gotten super good at it. So it comes with... Uh, friends tools that are companion tools so it's not it's a standalone thing but we use that live it applies for 15 minutes 15 seconds 10 months one month whatever um we use all the tools friends uh, i even started doing ichimoku as well i know it sounds crazy ichimoku if if i had to do it all over again and they tell me you can study only one i would study ichimoku because it has elements of everything else. I think if somebody understands Ichimoku, they can easily understand moving average trading or any other type of trading because it has everything in it. But the bottom line is I don't need any of that junk. I really don't. I can tell you that. I can tell you that in this chart, whatever it is, uh, for the last whatever time frame it is, they're selling rallies. So rallies are going to get sold. So I anticipate sellers here. So if, if the price comes here and I'm buying calls, I'm making potentially a mistake because we're going to do this. Now, if this happens to maintain a higher low, then okay, maybe now we're going to start buying dips. dips. But if we lose that, we make a lower low. That's how you would have lost your shirt last year. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. IWM, uh, one day, take out all the lines. Um, okay, so the first question is, uh, Jack, what's a, you're welcome. What's your view on most effective, successful indicators to use in your experience in day trading? Your eyeballs, Jack. Listen, listen to this comment here. So you give me this chart, whatever this is. Um, I had to, if you tell me trade this. I'll say, okay, I don't know what this is, but here's what I see from the chart. I see a long stint where the bears were selling every rally consistently, lower highs, lower lows. I see an effort to stabilize going sideways, right? That they held under extreme duress. This was a violent crash, folks. So was this one. That CPI reaction, I have never seen anything like this this one day. I had extreme 
I, the Bears had extreme wins at the open, and then they had extreme losses at the close. The Bulls had extreme losses at the open and extreme wins at the close. I've never seen that. I've never seen that. That was an unbelievable day. So this is a solid floor, solid test to a solid floor. So now lose that floor. You're going for a ride, folks. So what am I saying? I'm saying this, the Bears are in charge. 1000%. What does that mean? It means the machines are the machines are the ones controlling the price action, not you and me. These are machines, right? So if they're controlling the price action, they have to go by code. They call it algo. Look left. Yes, Manuel. Uh, algo. So the, the algo is an algorithm that says if this, then that, if this, then that, if this, then that. That's how I think. I'm an engineer from olden days who turned into finance and all of that. So you have rules of engagements for the program to execute line by line, but there's usually a mode it's in, right? So in this environment, that's what you do. So the environment is sell the rips. So they're looking for rallies to sell, right? Now what happened? Since this, they have tried to stabilize. Now they're going sideways. They are, what do they call that? Consolidation mode. Now the question is, is this consolidation mode to start building and ascending by the dip mode where they switch from this to a buy the dip mode? Is that the case? Or this consolidation, is this an A, B, C <laughs> where the trap door opens? If we lose the CPI low, folks, hunker down, take some bearish positions, we be going low because it's going to open up a trap door. When you bounce so hard on the board, you bounce again hard on the board, you better not bounce on that board one more time and lose it because it's going to turn into a trap door. You're going to bounce on it. It's going to break and you go whoosh, straight down. How far down? As much as you came. So maybe 205, 30 points are doable here. So imagine the IWM 130, 128, doable. So in SPX terms, if we lose... I told you 36.10 in the SPX, there's a gap. I'm okay going to fill the gap. The NASDAQ filled its gap. The IWM filled its gap. The SPX has not. So if we have a little hiccup and we fill the gap and move back, I'm okay with that. Let's say we fill the gap, we bounce, and then we fall in the lose 3,500, which is the equivalent of this in the SPX. Hunker down. We're going to bounce, try to recover it. And if we fail, we're going much much lower, 3430-ish, 3300-ish, 3229. My ultimate goal is 2540, and I'll show you where I get that. What did he say? 2540 on the SPX? That's not my forecast. I know it's there, though. Uh, let's go through it. All right, so this is the SPX. Hey, Nick, really quick, man. Don't want to interrupt. I know we're a hot session, but I want to give a quick shout-out to our newest family member, J.S. Meyer, welcome to the family. Let's go. Uh, great presentation, Nick. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're having fun. These, these are fun to me. I mean, they're taxing. It's Sunday and I don't have a lot of days off, but they're a lot of fun. So here's the thing. This is the SPX. Um, I don't know if you remember how the pandemic unfolded. We had all-time highs. And then we had a breakout before the pandemic started. And I'm thinking, what the fudge is happening here? China had already closed. They had canceled the, the, uh, the New Year holiday. And I was like, what? I don't understand this. And we had a new high that was violent. Everything just jumped. And then we crashed into the pandemic, right? And then we came back way too fast. And then we consolidated. And then fall of 2020 is where the markets went stupid. This is where all the new traders came in and they ruined Wall Street, ruined Wall Street's mentality. Maybe they improved it in the long term, but they, they completely broke Wall Street. And then we did this, which was completely insanely wrong. It was wrong because we were still shut down and then we go to a new all-time high. Why? Because we had trillions of dollars raining down on us, trillions. And that was, you know, it had to go somewhere. Anyway, so what happened since then? descending channel. The bears are 100% in charge on the weekly basis. They are not on the short-term basis. And they're selling rally mode, selling, and this is another rally. If we sell this rally and we lose this low, 
we are going to try to recover it. And if we don't, watch how they're all similar. We're going to come back and test the slow. And if we lose it, we're going to do this until we hit a zone that the markets deem it, okay, that's pretty good support. And if you think about it, this was the all-time high breakout before the pandemic. So Amazon went down to here. Facebook is definitely lower than here. Netflix went down to here. CRM, uh, Square, PayPal all went down to here. Apple still here. Tesla still here. Tesla can fall 70%. 70%. Tesla could be like 80 bucks and it would still not be lower than the pre pre uh, pandemic level. Microsoft and Google are closer, but they're still also high. So if we crash next, the three that are going to suffer the most in my opinion is Tesla is going to break break next. They're going to not but what happened to Tesla? Tesla, Apple, and Microsoft are the three top ones that come to mind that are vulnerable. But that's not my um, assumption. So my assumption is that we should shrug this off um, and, um, and cooler heads will prevail. But you should know that the bears are in charge and they will sell every rally to get you down to 2,900 where you think, like, there's no way we get there. Yes, there is. Let me show you something. Fire Marshal Bill, if you're old enough, let me show you something. Okay, so NVIDIA. This is a weekly chart in NVIDIA. These are my lines on NVIDIA. And when I, I promise you, I promise you, when I drew these arrows, I had people laugh at me. I guarantee it. And it was months ago. I said, they just lost the head and shoulders. And it's weekly. And it's massive. And this is the actual target. I give it to here. And look at where it's gone down to. This was my target. This is the official head and shoulder target. Look at where we're bouncing off. So maybe we get to here. There will be sellers here. So if you get long, and let's say you wait and 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 NVIDIA gets here and you get long, you're going to lose money. I guarantee it because the sellers are there. See these yellow and red line? The machines will sell NVIDIA right here. I guarantee it. If it gets to here, they're going to sell it one time. Now, whether they maintain a high or low, then come back and take it out. Now we would have an ascending channel where they're buying dips. We don't have evidence. The evidence is still the bears are in charge. The bears are in charge. Don't assume that we're done. We don't know. We may be done. Gut says we're done. We don't know. Okay, fluke, right? No, not a fluke. Here are my lines in AMD. I said you'd have the opportunity to buy AMD under $60 this year, and it was up here somewhere. Of course, I missed out on run-up, but that's those are my rules. I'm not going to chase. And if I didn't chase, now I can buy with confidence. This was my target from the head and shoulders. They came pretty close. Uh, so I'm not ashamed. And if they get to here, the, it could be even worse. <laughs> Okay, you, you want to hate me? Check this out. Check this out. By the way, this is what we do all day, every day. I love this stuff. I love it. I love, I love it when a chart comes together. Somebody made me a t-shirt. <laughs> um, check this out. Look at the size of this head and shoulders that Tesla is trying not to lose. Similar to AMD. It was massive. It was inconceivable for it to trigger, but it triggered. And if it does trigger, I think Tesla will be at 130, personally, with a lot of support. And I'm the guy that says never short Tesla, with a lot of support everywhere. They're, they're going to fight for this cluster. They're going to fight for that cluster for sure. This is the pre-pandemic high, which was like a 70% breakout. It's just crazy what Tesla did. So... Don't discount anything. If the stock market crashes, Tesla is going to be shellacked. Not because it's a terrible company. In fact, check this out on Tesla. People don't know this. It's way better than uh, GM and Ford. Way better. What you better. Listen, check this out. Listen, Linda. Isn't that what they say? Okay. Revenues, Tesla, uh, $53 billion. 2020 trailing 12 months so that's 12 months backwards from now 75 billion uh gross profit 19 almost 20 remember those numbers 75 and 20 so they make 75 in sales revenues and they keep gross profit 
20, right? Remember those numbers, 75, 20. Let's go to GM. Clearly a bigger company. And I used to make fun of Tesla when they didn't do, do, do these numbers. I used to say, GM farts at Tesla every day. At that point in time, it was correct. Okay, so GM sales, 147 billion. Remember 75 versus 100. So almost double the sales than Tesla. Less than Tesla. It retains less than Tesla in gross profit. How embarrassing is that? That's pretty embarrassing. All right. So, and, and you can look at Ford. It's the same. Ford probably is the same, I'm guessing. What am I saying here? I'm saying Tesla is not crap, is what I'm saying. It's not the Tesla from four years, five years ago, the one that the guy from GM, I forgot his name, the guy with the hoarse voice, 152 and only 17 and a half billion. It's even worse than GM. So why? Because these two companies, GM and Ford, are trying to make the turn to be electric. If you think about it, Let's take the F-150, just the F-150. And let's. Ford said, I will not have ice machines in the next 15 years or whatever. Whenever they said, no more uh, combustible, um, combustible fuel motors, right? So no more internal combustion engine. That's what ICE stands for. So they have to go to electric because that's what everybody believes it, it's going to be. I don't think so, but that's what they say it's going to be. Hey, Nick, really quick. Sorry, man. I just have to, uh, a couple of people are asking here. Yes, if you do join today, you will get Benzinga Pro included, okay? So you do get Benzinga Pro included for free if you sign up while we're live, okay? I cardboard is this being recorded? No, this is not being recorded. <laughs> this is only, if you're live here watching, you, you, you'll watch it live, but we're, we're not going to send it a recording. I'm not going like to... I knew it wasn't going to be recorded. That's why I was cussing a, a hell, of, hell of a lot earlier. Yeah, well, listen, man, let, let's just get down to it, okay? I know your best friend, Jay Powell, okay? Uh, he's been, listen, folks, I'm going to tell you something, okay? When they say don't trust the government, like, they mean don't trust the Fed, okay? This guy, Jerome Powell, has been lying from the beginning, okay? From day one, transitory inflation, BS, soft landing, BS. And now, like, I mean, you guys, you understand where I'm going, right? You literally have to know that as a community, as traders, that's why we stick Fuel. together because none of us are in the Fed. None of us are, you know, trying to get reelected. We're here trying to make it as traders. And if you turn on CNBC, you turn all these mainstream media places, they're just lying through their teeth. They're reading through a teleprompter for their sponsors, okay? We are here for the people, for the small guy, for the little Whoa. guy. That's the truth. That's the truth. We're not canceled yet. This is Nick. like a, a rally. Right? I'm not running for anything, folks, yeah. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> We're not canceled yet, Nick, okay? But we have to keep it real for the folks because that's why they love you. That's why they love Benzinga. Because we're not biased. We're here to help individual people, the little guy. There's Mark, nobody out there Mark, the little guy. Mark, the cost per unit is so cheap. I, I wish you can scrape up enough money to sign up for it, monthly or not. If it was yes. me pricing this on my own, I would make it that much a month because I don't have the power of Benzinga. The power of Benzinga is that they can spread out so many people that they can spread out the cost. For me... The amount of effort I put into this, I don't do anything. I promise you. I don't even have a freaking car anymore because I don't go anywhere. I go to the gym on Saturday and beat on people and get beat up a little bit. Um, yeah, Nick's, Nick's kind of wild. Like Nick yeah. is like part of the fight club. He's like the... <laughs> he's it's a, part it's of a little crooked today. It's a little <laughs> more crooked than yesterday. Listen, if there's any problems, Nick, you got 400 members in the chat room that will go take care of this, okay? <laughs> no, but seriously, guys, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Look, I realize that, like, unfortunately... Whoa, what's going like, on? You're at a bar. I know where you're at. You're yeah, at a bar. It's the, the Dolphins game is in the back. I'm sorry, but I, I'm not a Dolphins fan, all right? Don't hate me. But the thing is, folks, that um, unfortunately... There's really nobody out there to help the little guy. Nobody cares about the little guy. The little guy gets screwed all the time. That's why we're doing this. That's why we love all our members, James Donahue, Tammy, all the people. I know I'm on a first name basis, Nick. This is totally different. And if you've never been in a chat room, I promise you, you've never been in a chat room like this. This is the number one chat room in the world. Okay, I'll say that in the world, the best options chat room in the world. And Nick Shaheen is the top guy there this guy does not sleep he was on a vacation in the bahamas one day and he's still on the chat room all day so so i have a lot of respect for nick because he is fully committed 
fully committed. I'm all I'm in. Up. I'm all in. <laughs> We're all all in. You can't be wait, all wait, in. Wait, listen, not. listen, listen. You, you don't see it. So yesterday, I, last night, I went to Costco to pick up something like small. I forget, peanuts or something. I walk out with a $500 bill. Why? I bought two new monitors. <laughs> Uh, you can't see them. It's a freaking mess. I bought two Dells. If you're looking, Costco, $50 off of a curved 32-inch Dell and Samsung. So that makes them $175. I thought it was a bargain. So I'm replacing two 27s that are dying older, Samsung and Asus. Mismatch. Toss them. We're bringing 32-inch. Uh, so anyway, yes, I'm fully committed. Everything I do is for the group. I bought a 49-inch monitor so I can monitor a couple of screens that are uh, that have 18 to 24 tickers so I can see more opportunities. I added a 34-inch monitor just to use Trady Ticks and watch the money flow and the algo flow, the data that I don't see anywhere else. And I don't even touch that monitor. It's way up there. But since we put that monitor in there, we've caught so many swings. So you'll see price fall one time. And then if you have data sources that tell you that's not what the machines are doing. So then you call that divergence. So if price is falling and the machines are still buying, then there might be a turn. So you go to the chart of that stock and you say, okay, where is the support level? Right. If there's a support level close by, you say, get long with a stop for fast trades. Those are money. So we did that. Yeah, and and it's working and, out beautifully. And, and this works for people with a full-time job or you're busy. So Kelly or Kay Jellick asking, I'm considering your service, but I'm living in Norway. Listen, man, we got people from all over the world, from Nigeria all the way to Canada to Finland. Uh, I have, I have, a, lot of, I have a, a lot of Australians who are definitely challenged with the time. Um, and they make it out. Um, they, they make it in. And uh, I do have uh, people in Germany, people in on all, all continents. I have a... A lot of uh, Arabs these days. I'm Lebanese, so yeah. I'm speaking Arabic with a whole bunch of people in there. By, by the way, Nick, these people are cheering for you. They're cheering for Nick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have, we, have, we have people in Italy for sure. <laughs> and, um, and so I think if you're committed, I mean, if you want to trade live, I'd love to have you. You should be able to make it. And if you can't trade live, you will get the information whenever you wake up. You can trade on your own once a day and you have my resource for the questions in the chat room. So I don't think you shouldn't, uh, I don't think not being on the same time zone I'm in is a discount. Uh, you shouldn't worry about it. If you can't be live, you can't be live, but you still have access to everything else. The live room is the last bit extra over the top gravy that I offered, icing. I'm in California, so I'm at a disadvantage three hours. So I get up at the crack because. I'm in California and I'm here in this chair over 10 hours a day for you. And when the day ends, I continue doing homework because I have to do homework. I do scans. I improve my skills by adding tools that I don't need, but I add them. For example, I am bulletproof with the levels. I know where's support, where's resistance, where's the breakout coming. I am super strong with the momentum, who's in charge, what's going to happen next. What I don't know is like people who do pitchforks can tell you by what time something is going to hit a certain level that are good. We have two or three people in our group that do pitchforks and they can tell us that. Well, I'm trying to develop something with the wolf wave that can maybe be able to give me that. So far, I've been able to get the levels excellent on the wolf wave, but the timing I'm off by a few hours here and a few hours there. Like this last dip and recovery in the S&P and the NASDAQ, the QQQ, I plotted it perfectly. Like I said, 361, 360, 365, 366, 382, 386, 390. I had it all plotted. I was just off by a few hours here and there. So we weren't surprised with the level. Uh, it just came too fast. The bounce happened too fast, and I hated it. Will we be trading exactly the same ones Nick does every day? I don't know what that means. You trade whatever you want. I'll share what I'm doing, and you decide what you want to do. Listen, there's no way to describe this other than we have a service where you can, if you want, join us live, but you don't have to. And if you can't join us live, you're going to get one trade from me a day, period, end of story. That's it. Maybe Fridays, I'll, no trade on Fridays. Um, but if you want more than one trade, you pop in the live room, you get 10 trades a day if you're fast. 
you can have one trade a day on the SPX. And, it, uh, you know, I don't know if you noticed that the SPX expires every day. There's a contract that expires every day. And there is another one called the XSP. I don't know if you're aware of that. Did you know that the SPX has a baby brother? The XSP is the SPX, one-tenth. What does that mean? Um, it's just one-tenth of the cost. So the options are one-tenth. And guess what? This too expires every day. So if you are a fast, if you are a trader that can trade the day, you can make bets that expire every day and have you uh, make money out of thin air. The XSP is also a CBOE product. It's not as liquid as the SPX, but if you can trade the SPX, you can trade the SPX, XSP. Look, Nick, look really quick, same. and Rick to trade is asking, are these mostly day trades or swing trades? I think you offer both of them, Nick, right? So I can't say it enough. It, it, the message is not coming through. Listen, Rick, my service is providing you one trade a day, just about, maybe four trades a week. The trades do not have to be fast. You can do them for three weeks, two days, whatever you want. You hop in, they should develop over three weeks or so. If you have the time and opportunity to join me live, you can trade 100 times a day. So I'm committing to providing you with trades that do not need babysitting, that anybody can do, that take two, three, four weeks to unfold, maybe more sometimes. I'm also committing that I'll provide you with 10 trades, 100 trades a day if you want them, but you have to join me in the live room for that part. Yeah. The so, other thing, Nick, is that like, I mean, again, a lot of new traders get, they, they, they really, look, a lot of new traders make the same mistake. It's very, it's very, look, from what I've talked about, 8,000 traders, it's always like the same silly beginner mistakes. Like you buy contracts out of the money, you try to go too high risk. And I know that you do daily, you give a daily iron condor. Can you explain what an iron condor is? Just so we yeah. can get so we can get saucy here, okay? Yeah. All right. So I already showed you what an iron condor is. This is caterpillar. This is a real trade that I shared. So I said caterpillar should stay below 240. Caterpillar should stay above 190. And if it does, I win. This is a bear call spread, credit call spread. This is a bull put spread credit put spread. I collect money. I collect money. I wait. Caterpillar does this. I win. Caterpillar does that. I lose. Caterpillar does that. I lose. So how much do I win? In this case, about 27%. Um, that's, that's all there is to it. This is an iron condor. If you want to see it in action, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So SPY. Okay. Uh, this is Monday's contract. Let's say Monday's, uh, the trade is going on right now. Okay. Let's say the market is open. The market is at 376. If you can say in the next eight hours, uh, the, the market is not going to fall below 370. Let's make it a round number, a nice round number. 370. And if that's the case, I'm going to sell a credit put spread, bull put spread. What does that mean? Uh, first of all, if you don't know what these are, let's walk you through it. If you've never seen an options table, this folks is an options table. Um, and it's a bunch of contracts. If you don't know what puts call and calls are, listen, this is your crash course in options. And first things first, you do not need to own shares to do anything with options. If I don't own shares, I can buy and sell options however I want. Uh, second of all, options are not riskier than stock. They can be because they, they are definitely faster. So they can be risky, but if you use them properly, they're safer, safer in relativity than regular stocks. And I'll, I'll prove to you a little bit later. So let's do this. Um, I still have about 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops, uh, Rodrigo, just heads up. So let's let's um, so if I can say tomorrow when the market opens and if we open here, if I look at the data and say to myself, you know what, I think they're going to defend the one the 370 level. So I'll take a risk down there. If we open down, I would sell it lower. But let's assume the market just opened and this is what I'm seeing. I'll sell a put spread, and if a price does not fall, I win. So let me go back to tell you what a put spread is. So what a put is. 
uh, everything here is a contract. And just like every contract, they have stipulations, they have terms. Um, so this is one term. Everything here is for the SPY. That's called the underlying Wall Street buzzword. <sighs> I can't stand it. Uh, <laughs> number two is how long is that contract? This contract is for one day. They have one for the day after, day after, day, uh, sorry, um, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, SPY. So this particular contract lasts only one day. Uh, quantity, 100 shares. What do you mean? Every contract here, whatever you pick, calls, puts, it doesn't matter. It's for 100 shares of what? SPY. For how long? One day. So now we've gotten three major stipulations. Another one, price. Uh, what level contract do I choose? In this case, I chose these two. Okay. So now we're getting our bearings straight. Uh, this side, they're calls. They come in two flavors, calls. And this side, they're puts. Everything on this side of the page are puts. Everything on this side of the page is calls. Remember earlier, I used Apple. I said, instead of buying Apple, I can buy a call to lock my price. In this one, instead of buying SPY, I can buy a call to lock my price. Okay, so that's what a call means. I lock my price. I'm guaranteeing myself the opportunity to buy the shares at 377, even if they run up to 390 that day. I'm in at 377. Uh, conversely, um, if I buy a put, I'm guaranteeing myself an exit, a sale at a certain level. So now we kind of had a crash course. Uh, calls and puts, um, neither is bearish or bullish. They both can be both. If somebody tells you puts are bearish, they're wrong. <laughs> they don't know options. Uh, when calls are bullish, they're wrong. They don't know options. They can be bullish. They can be bearish, both of them. Okay. Now, a credit put spread is where I think that, okay, support is going to hold. So price is not likely to do that. So I'll take a risk down here. And if I'm right, I collect about 13, 14% of my money. Okay, so let's say that wasn't all I thought. Let's say I thought some other stuff as well. So in this case, I sell a put and I buy a put. Both together, they're called a put spread. Bull put spread, credit put spread. I collect a credit, credit. So if I open this trade, money goes into my account. If I'm right, I keep the money. If I'm wrong, I may give back some losses. Okay, so that is one side of the iron condor. The other side of the iron condor looks like this, the opposite picture. I sell a call and I buy a call, but I don't do it here. Um, that's called a, a very tight iron condor. By the way, this is an iron butterfly. So I want to leave room, right? So I want to leave just as much room as this one. And in this case, I'm collecting 22 cents. So now I'm collecting more. I have a big wide uh, area where price can die on tomorrow afternoon at the bell, and I win. This, folks, is an iron condor. I don't need a rally. All I need it is to be above 370, at or above 370. I don't need a drop. All I need it is not to go above 382. If that's the case, I win. How much? About 25% more, a little bit more. And when do I get paid on it? That same day. So I collect money, credit. The order is credit into my account. If I preview the order, it's off hours. Look, credit you receive minus fees, $200 goes into my account. And what if price is between these two? The $200 stay in my account. This is the same day I meet. This is the day. The bell rings tomorrow. That thing dies tomorrow. I do one a day for myself. And um, you don't need a lot of money for this. The SPX does the same thing. The SPX version of this will get you $100 a day, and you're risking $400. Um, for, and the account size can be, if you can open up with $400 worth of risk, you can open up a credit spread in the SPX as long as your account is set up to sell spreads and as long as your platform allows for the SPX. Robinhood does not carry the SPX. That's reason enough for me to ditch Robinhood. Not that it's a bad platform. I want to trade the SPX. Um, so if I'm looking to start a, a, an account, Find a, a, a platform that allows for you to trade the indices, the SPX, the RUT. Those are important indices uh, because you can do this in the RUT as well. Um, it takes a while. So somebody, here's another question that I get all the time. How much money do I need to get started with you? Zero. 
If you've never done this stuff and you're using real money, shame, 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 shame. <laughs> you should paper trade, pretend, get to understand the concept, do it, do it, do it, do it. And when you get the handle of it, you do one contract. If it works, you do it, do it, do it, do it. You get two contracts. If it works, you do it for a little bit longer, you get three contracts and then you slow down. Um, my first year, I got so lucky. It was six figure salary. The next year I got smacked. Okay, so I thought I was the shit. And then it turns out I was super lucky and I learned a whole bunch of lessons later. So this was decades ago. Uh, lessons learned. You either pay it in real money or you pay it in tuition, which is what this is. So uh, this is a crash course in iron condors. They're not foolproof. They're not magical, but they are super fun. And I do the easy version of these, which is a, like this sometimes collects a lot of money and it's short term, like a couple hours long tops, but you have to manage it like really tightly. So you collect, you know, 500 to, and you risk 500, but you decide within a hundred or two to call it quits or not. Hey, Nick, really quick. I want to give a big shout out here. J.S. Myers, uh, K uh, Kelly, welcome. Corey, welcome to the family. Let's go. Whoa. There's a ton more people. I'm sorry if I don't get to all you guys, but like, <laughs> listen. Listen. Nick, Nick is high demand. Nick is the most high demand man that I've ever met. I'm, I'm exhausted right now. So I'm going to ask you something. Hello, all just signed up. Hey, JSM. <laughs> Live still. Here, we're talking to JSM right now. So uh, here, BZV. Go watch. <laughs> go watch some videos. <laughs> Whatever that is, that was supposed to be a... Listen, guys, I see a lot of hearts, a lot of claps. All I'm going to say is that if you like this, you, Nick is literally doing this the entire day. Yes. Wait, it's wait, not a joke. Where, where is my coins? I Every once in a while, I slip a cuss word doing the live room. Oh, look at all the likes coming in. I didn't know you could do that on Zoom. All right. But we have people on YouTube also. I don't want to be rude. There's a bunch of people, and we always we don't typically look at that, but let's go through a couple. Yo, Richard Judge in the house. What's up, dude? Um, Zach says, thank you. Been watching you guys since I started trading. Da, 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 da. Zach, hit me up, dude. Mace, how about the Russell Index? Is that one profitable too? Nick, I know you have thoughts on the Russell. You always talk about the Russell. What's yeah, I do. That? Listen, pay attention. So about three weeks ago, I said, I need to focus on the small caps. They crashed first. If you remember, the small caps couldn't even hold their footing and the, the other uh, indices were making new highs. So I said, watch the small caps. It's the market. It's 2000 stocks. They were not affected by the giga caps. If you remember Friday, uh, when, last week, Apple, Google, all these big guys were falling out of control. And the question is like, what's going on? Well, if you wanted to look at the market, then you look at stocks that don't have that and they're they're a better tell. So maybe the IWM RUT, that's the small caps, the, the Russell 2000 index, maybe, maybe they are basing. I already show, showed you earlier what, how would that look like? You know, you're descending lower highs, lower lows. That is a clear continuation of sell the rip mode. And for the last few months, you're trying to establish. And, and let me zoom out. I should have zoomed out a little bit more. Okay, so here, let's, let's do it that way. I'm glad you asked. This is great. This is great. So by the way, I am not from Wall Street. I never worked for Goldman Sachs. I don't know shit about shit when it comes to those companies. Um, I'm an engineer who figured this stuff out on his own. And uh, a lot of experts, you know, they, I, can, I know what they mean when they talk Vega and Gamma and, and, uh, and uh, Dex and Charm. I know this stuff, but you don't need it. I promise. Okay, you don't need it. So here, um, bulls in charge, no doubt about it, right? Out of the pandemic. They spent months consolidating. They spent months stuck. And then they lost footing. You can see it. They tried to recover footing. You can see it. Prior support becomes forward resistance. That's a head and shoulder-ish pattern that pointed out to here. And then they tried to recover it again. They didn't come close. So they, they ran, by the dip, by the dip, by the dip, by the dip. They consolidated. They faked us out. That faked me out. And then they lost footing and now they're selling rips, right? Now, are they consolidating another time like this one? If they are, maybe they're ready to start buying the dip, trying to recover this stupid zone. If they're not, 
then if they lose this, they will come full circle and get back to here. So you have to be open to what the small caps are doing. That's why I said, look at the CPI. The CPI bottom is your trigger. If we lose it, get ready. Don't pile in the puts right away. Get Make sure your portfolio su can uh, survive such dip. Uh, an easy way to protect yourself is by buying a debit put spread. It gives you time to jump in and fix things. It's not protection. Protection is super expensive now. Although the VIX is off, it's uh, the, it's it's average, I believe, is 19-ish. So at 24, it's still expensive to buy puts and, and to, to protect yourself. That's the only protection, puts, but it's super expensive. So the second best thing is to do a debit put spread. If you're interested in what that looks like. Nick, um, I don't, did you already show the education? the education videos because you do have videos yeah, on what is a credit put spread all that okay perfect. i did i did so uh ah. let's see i'm trying to show you a protection trade what did i end up on in november 25th right here what did i end up on 371 where is it There it is. Okay, so current price is right here. Trust me, it's worth it. Okay, current price is right here. If I wanted to protect my portfolio, the only way to protect with options is to buy a put. If I buy this one put, it costs me almost $800. But if the market crashes, it's good protection. It's compiling profits to offset any losses anywhere else. And it doesn't matter what. All it needs is the S&P to fall. And it's making money like this. You have a couple of green days, though. It dies pretty quickly. And the VIX is high, so I'm overpaying for it anyway. So... Doing this is hardcore. And you have one up day in the market and you're down 40% on that thing. It's hardcore. The second best thing is to do something like this. You buy one and you sell one. If you do it $10 wide, just below current price, it should be about $350. So you cut your expenses in half. Why would you want to do that? Because then if the market crashes, okay, um, you can get maximum benefit, even if it just drops 7 or 8%. And if it stays down there, this $350 turns into 1000 So then you have a tangible number. Uh, how much do you need? How much of this stuff do you need? Well, think back to the worst down day recently. How, many, how much were you down? 5000 Then that's your exposure on a bad day. How much of that do you want to cover? maybe 1500 you don't want to cover all of it that's just way too expensive so then you back into okay maybe i need two of these or one it depends on the size of the, the and the good thing about it it's a rental so if you have an up day in the market you're not getting shellacked because this one is losing a lot but this one is gaining a lot and this one you sold so it's a spread it's literally spreading your risk so that is a debit put spread it's a bearish position if you don't because the only way it makes money is if price falls. But in your case, you're not being bearish. When you buy insurance on your car, that doesn't mean you hate your car. It means you need to drive it with some peace of mind. So owning a put is not bearish if you're owning it to protect your portfolio. That means you love... If you buy a put in Apple because you have shares and you want to protect your shares, that's not a bearish thing. You love your shares so much, you're willing to spend money to hang on to them. The person that sells you the put loves your shares so much they want them to take they want to take them off your hands in case you decide to change your mind so these are not bearish positions these are <clears throat> hedges against long positions when you do a spread it has a limited effect it can only bring you a thousand dollars in in the worst case scenario and after that it, that's it it caps out at a thousand dollars maximum value uh so that's the bad thing but the bad thing about just buying this one where there's no cap, as long as it's falling, you're making money, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. But you have one or two good days in the market, 
your insurance runs out pretty quickly. So potato, it's what is your, what's your portfolio? Maybe you don't need protection. Currently, my portfolio does not need protection because my exposure is tactical. So um, let's say the markets go down 40%. I know how much I'm going to lose. It's a tactical scenario. I own a few shares, but it's a fraction of what I want to own eventually. For example, I own Palantir and Palantir reports tomorrow. If it gets cut in half, I'll add another 30% of my portfolio. So I took a position in Palantir, which Everybody was Everybody loves Palantir. Like what, I know you've been talking about Palantir for a while, but like, why do you love Palantir so much? I don't love anything, okay? I like the, the prospects of Palantir because it's an AI company. Um, so the I, <laughs> it has haters. That's why I like it. When hate turns to love real quick when they get shellacked. So Palantir, um, they've been in the AI game for a long time. And now the market has come to them. After the pandemic, every company went online. So now most companies have tons of data dumping in their systems. They don't know what to do with it. Uh, most people working behind the desk are not super smart. So you need help. This is a uh, consolidate your data sources within the company and empower your people the power of making decisions basically on push button. It's almost the equivalent of the McDonald's picture of a burger on the button as opposed to it's like, okay, what are you ordering or whatever? So simplify, empower your company to do better with the data it has. That's the idea with Palantir, the way I understand it. And they have a portion from the government, which is pretty sizable, and a portion from the private sector. And the reason I buy dips is because every time it dips is over one of those stupid reasons. Oh my gosh, the, the executives are getting paid too much. Who cares? They're growing the company hand over fist. Or... um. Oh my gosh, uh, they lost uh, business from the government. Who cares? Because they made it up in the private sector. So if a store is selling apples and oranges, and suddenly they're selling a schmutt load of oranges and a lot fewer apples, but they're growing the business, who cares? So they're over a $2 billion business, I bet you, soon. We'll see that tomorrow. And if that scenario has not changed, the growth prospect has not changed, I will buy the dip. So the way I did Palantir, is I said, I like the company. I want to nibble because I don't trust the market. So I took a 20% stake, maybe tops of what I usually want. So I didn't go all in. I took a bite. I know that I didn't nail it and it fell and I sold puts to get assigned. I didn't get assigned. So I, I made money out of thin air. So now I'm long and profitable and we're going into earnings. Tomorrow it could fall 20%. I don't know. And if it does, I will add another 20%. I will double down, but I'm averaging in, not averaging down. Major difference. Why? I did not go 100%. I took 20%. And if I add another 20%, I doubled down, but I'm still short of my total goal, 60%. So I'm not doubling down. I'm averaging into a full-size position of 100% at different levels because I know I can't pin the right level. As opposed to somebody that took along with me and went all in. And if it falls 20% tomorrow, they're going to decide to make their problem bigger by doubling it. That's wrong. That's averaging, in, that's averaging down. That's wrong. Don't ever average down. I'm averaging in, not down. Completely different story. Completely different story. Nick, I know we've been talking about a couple of stuff, but I mean, the energy sector, I know you called ah, the energy. Whoa, done whoa, whoa, that whoa. With <laughs> whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know that you said uh, several, several months ago that shorting energy is going to be the biggest short of a lifetime. And you've been right all this time. And I've been, I mean, this is the thing because it's such a wild market. The market that you have today, Nick, is not the market that we had in 2020. Winging it is not, uh, you should not do that and never trade alone. Never trade alone, right, Nick? Correct. Never trade alone. So check this out. I need to leave in about a couple of minutes. Would that be okay with you? Okay. So this is Exxon, right? I'm going to pull up a monthly chart. All right. Just let's say you don't know anything about investing. Um, I'm short the XLE with uh, credit call spread at 93 or 92 and a half or whatever it is. So it's Stephen. I'm short the XLE, but I don't need a drop. I just need it not to rally. Um, so look at this. In the history of investing, 
Has this, somebody looked at this and said, oh, that's a great entry point. Whether it goes from here to here doesn't matter. Is this a potential bad entry? Anybody that says no is lying to themselves. Forget the ticker. Forget the ticker. This is not an obvious entry point to anything. So the, the least I can say, son, if you're looking to invest, you missed it. <laughs> Wait for a dip. Look at this line. This is a monthly chart. Every, every one of these is a month. Look at this line. That was an insane breakout. Insane. If you're looking to invest up here because Warren Buffett is buying Oxy, I think you're potentially opening yourself for a giant disappointment. There is a scenario where this does that. When, I don't know. But there's that scenario. And it will come from the price of crude oil crashing. Why would it crash? Because it's completely manipulated price, 100% manipulation. We don't have an energy crisis. We have an energy policy crisis. We have all the energy we want. We just need to go get it. And we decided that, no, we would rather pay up the wazoo in oil and beg people who hate us for oil rather than dig our own oil. In my opinion, we should put ESG investing on hold for like six months. I'm not saying cancel the green movement. I'm just ES saying for ESG is a scam. Elon Musk said it Oh, himself. I'm not saying that. Now ESG you're is a scam. A bunch of people. See, <laughs> I did not True. say that. It's important to take care of the of the planet. It is important to take care of the planet. But in the scheme of the planet's age, four and a half billion years, whatever it is, six months delay in being super green is not going to make it or kill it. I promise you. But it will definitely kill inflation, help kill inflation. Inflation, um, the cost of energy is so big in the inflation picture, in my opinion. Everything that we buy, food, stuff, shoes, clothes, books, everything, monitors, goes on a truck that comes from diesel. Uh, and so if you reduce that truck's expenses, the haul is going to be cheaper. The TV is going to be cheaper you can kill inflation a lot faster than raising stupid goddamn rates. I cannot believe that the financial leaders of this country are trying to destroy this country to control inflation. Here's the strategy that Powell is taking. He can't control supply, right? When you have inflation is you have too many buyers for the same thing. So they outbid each other. I'll give you an example. I'm in the market for a car. I can't buy a used car without paying up more. I can't do it. I can't. I would have to pay use Lexus money for a crappy Toyota. That's wrong. For a, for a small entry-level Corolla, I pay now what I would pay for a used, nice midline, midline Lexus. Pickups are $100,000 used. I saw a used Rivian for $223,000 on, online in, in one of the Alpha stores here near me. Uh, it's just insane. So why? Because there's one truck and 50 buyers. They're going to outbid each other. So what's Powell's strategy? Well, I can't make more trucks. So I'm going to destroy demand by making sure the buyers are fewer. How can you make sure the buyers are fewer? You destroy jobs. His job is to create jobs. And the mofo now wants to destroy jobs. Why? Because he fucked up last year and caused uh, helped cause the inflation. And now he wants to destroy jobs in order to get you not to be able to buy the truck. It is. I cannot believe they're letting it happen, but it's happening. So you got to live with it. In my opinion, inflation is going to need years to burn off. We made a mistake. We overreacted. We just got to live with it. You don't need to destroy the job market to get it done. Okay, I'm done. Whew. Where's my mic? Is that a mic? Hey, drop. you're going to drop the mic? I dropped the <laughs> screwdriver. It looks like a mic. <laughs> so uh, really quick, though, before we do end up this stuff, and I'm going to stick around here talking with, like, you know, about the chat room and stuff like that. But I just want to tell you something personal here that, like, when I was trading options before I joined Benzinga, Nick has been the game changer. Nick is the X factor in my trading career. And definitely, I, I mean, I tell it. Nick. That's the truth. So Steve said, uh, Donald tells us what really, <laughs> Nick, this was fun. This was really fun. If you think this is fun, join the chat room because you're going to be there with Nick the entire day, even Sundays. Nick, you, you get you get this every day. And if you want to push my buttons, just say Powell or oil or something. <laughs> say Powell and he will like explode. <laughs> anyway, this was fun because we cussed a lot too. That was great. <laughs> All right. I got to run. I got to run. 
I appreciate you. Hopefully you joined. And if you did join, I'm not going to be in the chat room for a, for a lot. Uh, I have to go visit some family and eat a bite and walk the dog Damn. and work at, at uh, in the evening. Probably the video will be out late tonight because I will be away. And by the time I get home, so you may watch the video by tomorrow, but it'll be there. I promise it'll be there. Just be careful this week. Don't chase. Don't chase. Be ready. Don't chase. All right, folks. I appreciate big, you. Big, big shout out. Hold up, Nick. We got to give you the big, the, the big oh, salute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Damn, son. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? Yo, Nick. <laughs> Nick, Nick is, is the top dude. Um, All right, Nick, later. I love you. I'll see you in the chat room tomorrow. Folks, um, I'm going to show you here the live room, okay? Um, let me just settle up here because I got a lot of windows here. And again, you know, uh, I just moved into a new apartment. So I have to, uh, I'm here at Twin Peaks. I apologize for the noise, but I always come do webinars from here and it's always fun. But what you're seeing here is pretty much the live room where Nick is the entire day. Okay. So for all you guys that join, what's up? What's up, Khalid? Twin Peaks is awesome. Absolutely. Big shout out to these guys. Um, so Nick Shaheen, you see the Nick's important messages here. So there's two channels. Okay. Inner Circle Chat and Nick's Important Messages. When you click on Nick's Important Messages, only he can post there. So that means that you're not gonna get any lag. It's super easy to find the post, but I'll tell you really quick, this is the video that he posts every Sunday. Remember we talked about the Sunday session, he's there. I can show you a little bit of this, but I wanna go over a couple things for all the people that joined, okay? <clears throat> Steve, you're a funny dude. Um, so when you see this link, okay, when you see this link, it says, I have an internet outage. Okay, so everyone's having internet issues, but this is the link that you have to look for, okay? It says live session, okay? Once you click this session, you got to download free conference call, and you'll be able to access Nick Shaheen's live room where he's literally the entire day, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. It never changes. So you will have a mentor. You will have an instructor. You will have an educator the entire day. I don't remember the last time when I went to college at LSU and I paid so much more than what I paid for this chat room. And I never had a teacher that was there nine hours a day. I never, that's not realistic. However, we make it happen. Benzinga makes it happen. Why? Because we're here for the little guy. Remember I was talking about this stuff, like who's for the little guy. Well, nobody's trying to help the little guy. Nobody cares about the little guy. The little guy always gets screwed until Benzinga came along until we came up here with this chat room and we started helping the little guy, okay? And if you think about it, I understand, you know, all these other places have their own way of doing business, but Donald, no, there's no free cats today. I do have two cats. I will sell them for $5,000 each. I'm joking, I'm not gonna sell my cats, all right? Don't email me about my cats. Um, <laughs> but if you once you get into the live session, make sure you click this link for everybody that joined, this is the link that you'll be able to access the room where Nick is the entire, entire day, okay? The whole day. And Nick doesn't have a filter. Like, we don't want filters. When it comes to money, you need to be unfiltered because that is how you want someone to be with you, right? When it comes to that, right? Like, when it comes to, like, trading and all this stuff, look, I get it. News is one thing. But we're not, well, at least for the chat room. Benzik is a news company and all that stuff. But like the chat room is all about helping individual traders make money. It's not about, you know, helping Citadel or, you know, any of these multi-billion dollar hedge funds. No, this is about helping the little guy, the guy that lives across my street, the server at the restaurant, the people that are trying to make a little bit of extra money, the single mom, the single dad that are trying to make extra money. And look, keep in mind, we are in a recession. Even though the White House changed the definition of a recession, we all know we're in it, okay? We have to be real. We're not gonna lie about this. And this is when you want to start thinking about additional revenue, additional income streams. So the chat room, whatever you do, we have a bunch of people that work full time in the chat room and they're still making money there. And that's really how you have to be. Like, you know, there's only a limited amount of hours you have in the day. You can't pick up five jobs. It's impossible. You have to find a way to be more effective and efficient with your time. That's where trading comes along. That's why so many CEOs, individual people come into trading because you can make a lot of money with it, but you can all, if, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can, you can lose all your money. 
So that's why it's important to have an instructor, have a mentor, an educator, somebody that can help you, okay? But my biggest piece of advice from personal experience and from the 8,000 traders that I've talked to around the world is going to be to turn off CNBC, focus in a chat, in a community like, like Benzinga community that we have in the inner circle that you can talk with individual traders. Because keep in mind, nobody is going to look out for you except for yourself, period. That is life and that's what we live in in this world. So you have to take care of your pocket. And by that, I mean, join a chat room that you see a lot of other people that are out there doing the same thing. There's a bunch of people that we have in the chat room. Again, keep in mind, little guys, that's what we're all about, helping the little guy. So um, I know that some people were asking about the um, um, a Nancy Pelosi ETF. There, there is going to be um, a Nancy Pelosi ETF that will come along. Um, I don't know the exact ticker symbol, but I know it's going to come out in a couple months. And there's, there's, so it's going to be out there, okay? But folks, keep in mind, for everybody that did join, Manuel, you already know it, dude. Um, <laughs> for everybody that joined, remember, you're going to get an email. In, you're going to get an email, right? You fill out the form and you put the address that you want the laptop to be shipped to. Once you fill that out, the laptop will be shipped out to you after the 30-day money-back guarantee. So let's go over this really quick before we do go into the session because I do want to go over a couple things with you guys, but I can't ignore all the people that signed up and the people that want to join. You know what I mean? Like I, I have to help everybody here. So, um, okay. So when you sign up, remember you're going to get an email, make sure you've put the address of where you want the laptop to be shipped to. That is super important because we have no way to ship it out to you. If we don't have an address, the second thing, make sure that you're there tomorrow at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. as soon as you can, because we're going to be talking about options and how to trade the market for that particular day. If you're a day trader, a full-time trader, part-time trader, it doesn't matter. This place is for you. So Hudson said, Hudson Paul from Uganda. Hey, man, we have people from all over the world. There's a bunch of people here from Nigeria. For some reason, there's a lot of people from Nigeria that watch this. I don't know why, but um, we have members from all over the world, from Ukraine, Finland, China, Canada, Mexico, everywhere, all over the world. I've signed up people from Hawaii, like middle of nowhere, right? So um, trust me, this is the best place. And if you didn't know, I launched these all these chat rooms. And when I launched this chat room with Nick, number one, it's the most popular one. But then again, Nick is very popular because he's unfiltered. He says things as they are. And when it comes to money, you want honesty. You want transparency. You don't want people to lie to you or like, you know, be dishonest about the stuff. And again, go back, going back to my main point, turn off CNBC. Okay. Focus in a chat room, in a live room, in a community of people that you know and trust and everybody that is in here. Okay. Probably 90% of the people that are in this chat room, I've signed them up or they've signed up through these live sessions. These are all real traders. Okay. I can go through each of these guys. We got JB. JB actually texted me this week. Um, and I, I need to get back to Jay. Doc, Doc has been one of the most influential top members that we've had for quite some time. Doc, if you're here, make yourself seen. But Doc is a great guy. I mean, I signed him up like years ago and he's great. You know why? Because we have a lot of people that are actual like members that have been there for years that help the new people. So you're not going to feel alone or anything like that because we always have people that help other people. You're not going to feel overwhelmed because at the end of the day, we have a lot of new traders. It's not like this is just for, let's say, advanced traders or anything like that. We have people that are intermediate, total beginners, total beginners, and I mean total beginners. All right. And we have people that are very advanced and they like it because you have a real community of real people that are actually trying to help you trade and make money. So <clears throat> Nando, all right, so let, let's go through the YouTube comments here. Richard Judge says, so true, Rodrigo, never trade. Yeah, Rick, Richard knows what's up. Um, Mace says, I love the way you guys explain the dynamics of the charts and market sentiment and how traders can get smarter and be more efficient with patience and focus. I appreciate you guys. Mace, we do this for you, bro, okay? We do this for the little guy, all right? I'm going to get a tattoo that says I'm for the little guy. Um, <laughs> Zach says, from a little guy, I appreciate your help. You don't know what this means to me. And I'm sure so many others think, thanks for taking care of us. Hey, uh, Zach, 
I am a little guy. All right. Like we're all, I mean, at least, you know, if you're Citadel or you're watching this, like, you know, take a hike, dog. Like this is for the little guy, for the retail trader, for the little guy, people, you know, single moms, single dads, individual people. That's what we're all about. Um, Zach says, thanks, Rodrigo, for the man. Enjoy Twin Peaks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Send me an email, Zach. All right, dude. Uh, I appreciate you too. I appreciate your attendance. I appreciate all y'all's participation because keep in mind, nobody out there is really going to take care of your money like you will, period. Like those are facts. So let me show you a couple things of the chat room. And then I'm going to show you uh, some of the videos that we have um, for the Sunday session, right? So if you want to watch the uh, Sunday session that Nick recorded, throw me a one in the chat if you want to watch it. All right. Just so I know um, if you want to watch that stuff. <clears throat> Guy Parith says, thank you so much. Nice to learn lots of stuff. Give some confidence. Hey, man, this is what we're about. This is what we're all about. OK, when I started doing these webinars and all this thing two years ago, I didn't know it would mean so much to you guys. I didn't know it would help you guys so much. But the emails I get of people that love it, that, you know, helping people it really that is my motivation that is my motivation again remember i'm not sponsored by citadel i'm not sponsored by any of these multi-billion dollar hedge funds i'm sponsored literally by the little guy right so it's all up to you guys right so um okay i say hey, deborah what's going on i hope you're feeling better i hope everything's working now with your recovery um mezzo mezzo um i'm putting the link in the chat um but yeah so if anybody does have, okay, Russell, I, I hear you. We're gonna watch the Sunday video session from Nick. Um, Ocean Planet, there's no recording, sorry, brother. You gotta watch it live or you miss it. Um, okay, so everybody wants to watch the Sunday session and let me post the link here so that we can kind of get things going. One second, folks. I just have to go over all the questions and stuff. Um, uh, PDX, yo, what's up, PDX? PDX is a longtime member of the trading school, of the Benzinga Trading School. What's up, brother? Jesse Hernandez, the Monday through Friday crew is here. What is up? Jesse, I love you, dude. All you guys already know me. I know you guys too. And hey, we're having a great time, all right? So let, let's keep having a great time. Nando, awesome show. Thanks, Nick and Benzinga. Yes, big thanks to Benzinga for putting this all together. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. Let's... Um, me wildflowers if you have issues with make sure to um i'm sorry about the noise uh, uh me wildflowers try refreshing the checkout page so that you can um so that you can you know get the checkout to work the checkout is working i tried it myself i'm a new member of the school i just paid for it myself too okay um so um just refresh it it will work there if you have questions though please email uh, the email that we put there in the contact, but, um, but yeah, so before we do get into the videos, guys, I want you to really kind of get a sense of what's really happening in the world. Okay. So, um, we have a federal government, we have the highest national debt in history. We have $31 trillion almost in national debt. We have the highest interest rate since 2007. So servicing that debt is going to be more expensive than ever. Right. So we have all that stuff happening, right? We have geopolitical factors with Russia, China, Ukraine, all this stuff that's happening out there, which is impacting semiconductors. And it's also impacting grain, oil, a lot of different sectors. If you think you're going to wing this market and figure it out, you're wrong. OK, I don't want you to blow up your account. And I'm talking from experience. Don't even try it. Be smart. Join the community. It, it's just it, it's just facts. Like, I really don't want you to blow up your account. That's why we're here to help you be smarter with your money. Okay. And then we have 40 year high inflation. All right. And whenever, whenever, you know, let's say the white house says that, you know, you, Russia caused inflation, inflation was 7.4% CPI CPI was 7. 7.4% before Russia even invaded Ukraine. So it, CPI has been high. OK, inflation has been high before the Russia stuff. So we need to be, again, honesty, transparency. That's what matters. Being honest about all this stuff, not just being honest with the folks. All right. Um, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. That's just not me. So um, do we have Sweden? We have an annual and we have a lifetime subscription. Um, the link is in the chat and you can pretty much join there. OK, 
and I'm going to be in the chat room tomorrow for a little bit. So Donald says dollar still world reserve, but how long? Who knows? China, Iran, Russia, they all want to de-topple the, the U.S. dollar. But I don't think they will because they're crooked and nobody trusts crooked countries. Um, sorry, this product cannot be purchased. This coupon. Um, meanwhile, can you close? So close the tab and uh, try to open it again. So close it and click on the link again. Um, and it, it should work there. But G Pyreth, we only have annual. We don't have monthly for this. Um, um, no, it's not, David. Um, it's only annual. The link is there in the chat. Uh, we're posting it there. So yeah, we have 40 year inflation high. We have CPI through the roof, okay? Oil is going crazy, geopolitical factors. This is not the time to wing it. It's not the time for you to try to figure this out. There's already a blueprint to success in trading, okay? Um, Anil, let me text you for that one second. So there is, uh, there's a blueprint, right, for, for anything. There's a process, right? We're not reinventing the wheel. We're just using what works and applying it to real life. So David, yes, it's only annual, unless you want a lifetime. If, if you do want a lifetime, you will have to email me. There's no other way around it. We don't have a checkup for the lifetime. We're a subscription model business. I'm just doing this to help you guys out, save you some money. Um, PDX, I see you. I hope you're doing good. Um, <laughs> Zach, hey, I appreciate you too, brother. So yes, um, this is definitely not the time where you do want to just try to figure it out. It's not like 2020 where everything was going up. We don't have unlimited QE. We're actually in QT. So it's a totally different economy. You, you're aware that we've had QE for more than 10 years. Most people don't even know what that is. Like we've had QE for way too long. The Federal Reserve has been pretty much pumping money into the market. And if you look at a chart of the dollar, it's been falling so drastically but it's just been, but it's not falling that hard compared to other currencies. So even though the dollar is, you know, quote unquote strong, but that's only because all these other economies in the, in the world are so bad. You know, you have Greece, Turkey, like hyper, hyper inflation, you know, like all these other countries that are going through the, the same problems that we are, they have currency issues and the dollar is a flight to safety and a flight to safety on the dollar is bad for stocks because a strong dollar is bad for the stock market. But I mean, nobody, I mean, we really don't even deserve a strong dollar to be honest. So um, need to, let me, let me put the price there for you. One second, man, hold up. Let me send this to you. And we're going to put the video of Nick. Uh, I just want to go over all the questions and all this stuff. So uh, one second, folks. Okay. Um, so um, there's a lot of stuff going on out there in the world, right? Currencies. I know we have a bunch of Forex traders. We have a bunch of futures traders out there in the market. Um, but again, keep in mind, there's so much to trading more than just buying and selling a stock. More importantly, knowing what's happening and, and knowing, being aware of the situation where you know that, for example, the Federal Reserve, you know, all these people, I don't, I don't want to get political, but like, you know, the, the, they've crashed this country into the ground and they're not going to help you. You have to help yourself. That's why you have to make money with this chat room. It doesn't matter if the market goes down or up. You can still make money, okay? So I know there's a lot of rough times, and I know people are going through tough times, and I understand, and I feel that, and this is why we're here, because we're here to help you. Even if times are tough, understand that in the markets, you can still make money. Even though businesses could be shut down and you know states can be shut down for COVID or whatever, the market never closes. That's why I got into the market. And I know there's a lot of people like that that got into the market for that reason. Maybe you had a business that went slow after COVID and maybe it's not the same. So maybe this is the opportunity for you to do that, right? So folks, um, one second here. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, TB, I get you. So we're going to go ahead and put on the video here from Nick Shaheen. Um, everybody, are you ready to watch the Sunday session from Nick Shaheen? Throw me a one in the chat if you're ready. Throw me a two if you're not ready. Okay. 
Ryan put like 21s. I want to see if I see a two. I, I, I'm really curious to see if I'll get a two. Um, that's going to be funny. Madison, good to see you here. We're doing roll call here, boys. Roll call. All right. Zach, I feel you, dude. Yes, I feel you. Um, but yeah, that's what it's all about. Helping each other out as individual traders. The little guy, the only person that's going to help the little guy is another little guy. Okay. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you. Jesse, Richard, Muhammad, PDX, Zach, Miss Lucia, Madison, BD Chang, Anil, David, Meso, Madison. Like, it's for you guys, okay? So let's go ahead and get this whole... Yo, Zach, chill out, all right? <laughs> Three, two. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pull up the session here. Um, give me a second, folks, so I can get this whole, oh, this whole thing uh, set up. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm not in my house. I'm not in my studio, so I'm, I'm just trying to wing it here. At Damn. <laughs> I'm trying to wing it here. So let's go ahead. Let's rip it. But before we rip it, I have to give a big shout out to uh, a couple new family members that we have here in the house. Okay. This is just, you know, housekeeping things that we have to go through. All right. And then we'll get back here to the session with Nick, folks. <clears throat> All right, we have D, uh, D Manz, D Manzar Dodge. Welcome to the family. Amin, welcome to the family. Got to give a big shout out to the folks. Let's go. Damn, son, where'd you find this? All right, all right, all right, everybody, calm down, calm down. Um, let's go ahead and watch the session, okay? Let's go ahead and pull it up, folks. Now we are live. Hello everyone. Thanks for being here. This is the day we change clocks overnight. So I only have 30 people here. Usually I have double that. So we're going to run through a whole bunch of tickers. But first the big picture. Last week could have been much worse. So I will say the Bears lost because they had the opportunity to put away the Bulls. The only thing is that if they're laying a bull trap, then they did a good job. Somehow, we have the VIX collapsing with equity prices. So as the market was falling hard two days in a row, the VIX crashed exactly with the market. That is unusual. Something is happening. There's also something happening in the crypto world. If I'm correct, we should be 25,000 crypto uh, Bitcoin. Hi, Rez. Um, so crypto is conceived is the no the notion the belief out there is that crypto is very risky right so why is it catching a bid scared money doesn't hide in risky stuff so there's something going on whether it's a huge bull trap to go down to 3000 svx or we indeed placed a tradable bottom with that cpi flash crash last week may don't have proof may have been the last ditch effort by the bear to break the bull and they couldn't. So unless there's something new in the headlines, I don't think we can make a lower low. I, 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 don't, I don't like the, the probability of making a lower low than the CPI. I favor the upside meandering. Now, this week we'll have uh, elections on Tuesday. Let's say give it a couple of days to get the big picture. If nothing happens and we get some sort of a gridlock result, the market may breathe a sigh of relief and rally. So we do have a binary week from that perspective. Meanwhile, we can trade stocks the way they stand on their own, but we have to be conscious of the fact that what happens to the market will affect what that particular stock is doing. So regardless of what this or other particular stocks look uh, like, like bullish or bearish, you have to keep in mind that like if I wanted to short Caterpillar, and I'm right about it, and the market takes off to the moon, Caterpillar is going to also rally, regardless. So that's the kind of thing is what I'm saying, and vice versa is correct. Bonjour, bonjour. Okay, so let's get started. We have a lot of tickers, and I'm going to go down. I'm going to, I'm going to try to answer questions that came up also. Um, I noticed there's a lot of Twilio-like companies that are falling off a cliff. Zscaler comes to mind. Avoid them. Those are super fast 
and you can take trades uh, but w with proper stops if you're long already any of these don't get longer don't add to your problem we don't know what the portfolio managers are going to do with them as a group so don't double down okay uh, Alcoa if they get above uh, 44 they could get to 48 they do have support below <clears throat> American Airlines I will be flying that this week um, bullish inverse head and shoulders if they can take out these and that's a big if they can get up here and more so don't be short this resistance now becomes support I don't know why I haven't changed it yet uh, so support zone here and support zone there um, one better than the other of course so it's going to be harder to get through here than through that so if you ask me I would hold longs with proper stops Apple Apple flash crashed so pay attention to Apple Microsoft and Tesla they are the clue to this market this week is this a hard floor for Apple to continue higher or is this the thing that will take the SPX to 3600 first 3500 second and then 3300 by Friday so pay attention to Apple Tesla and Microsoft I pick, I picked these three because these are the three that are still the highest of the big big caps the mega caps relative to their pre-pandemic highs Tesla is 70 percent this one is about 40 percent so they can collapse to the like this one can go to 115 and 112 and 108 technically fundamentally there's no reason unless the stock market crashes right so these will be the incremental cells because they still have a lot of fat compared to the pre-pandemic levels so be careful if this is not a floor we're in deep trouble as a market because Apple coming down to here alone it's not gonna happen if Apple's here the S&P is definitely at 3600 first by Tuesday maybe 35 within hours and if we lose 35 33 32 and 29 all doable not my forecast but these will be the things that could bring it down whatever headline breaks out they could cause that debacle down there we do have a, a gap in the SPX to 3600 and a gap to 4100 which will fill first I don't know so pay attention to the floor that Apple made last week it was violent it was tradable Abvi stuck in the middle of the range this is a two-hour chart I think it's hard to rally hard to fall nothing to do here new Airbnb <clears throat> I do like the company business I don't like how there's no recent support so let me zoom out to a, a one day um, okay so you could stay long against a floor which I am via credit put spread and I believe it already started paying because it bounced after the dip um, I don't think they disappointed as in growth they're still growing uh, so yes Google as well Rez, sorry included in that Microsoft Apple Google and Tesla Tesla is the worst Apple is the second uh, Microsoft and Google about the same although Google got shellacked pretty well so um anyway back to this I don't mind being in the credit put spread I don't know how long it will take them to rally or if it will rally I wanted to leave room for error so I liked it I'm happy with the percentages I got I'm not going to add calls personally uh okay I don't know when somebody asks me about a stock like this my answer will always be the same listen to this highly technical answer dude you missed it okay so I don't know what you're asking me if you're asking me to short it eh, I have a saying to stocks like this THTH it's too high to chase and it's too hot to short too high too hot uh, avoid it unless you know something that I don't from the te from the charts it's hard to get anything out of it ACN so uh, what a heartbreaker why because I, I started learning new tricks I wanted to incorporate new technical tricks and one told me it's gonna go big and um, I didn't do anything and it went big right but guess what it fell back into the base from when I thought it was gonna go big so I think this can happen so um, 
do, I said doable by 11.4 and definitely got there and then fell. So now I could get long a censure to see if I, it can do it again, at least the 272. <laughs> oh my God, you're talking sparring partner. My nose is going, it's pointing to the right, my right. I had a really hard sparring session yesterday. I still have a headache and I took a straight down the pipe to my face. So it's not broken, but it's swollen on one side. So it looks like it's broken, but it's not. At least that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Otherwise, my mom will say, Yee, you used to be so handsome. <laughs> I did lie like Pinocchio. Okay, so Accenture is worth a long. Credit put spread would work. Debit call spread would work. The combination of a credit put spread and a debit call spread. Why don't I have it? It is. Would work. Selling a put to own shares would work. Buying a call with a tight stop would work. Buying shares would definitely work. Anything. Whatever you're used to. Uh, just don't go all in. Okay, I don't know much about this, but it does have technical uh, opportunity. But these look difficult. However, they could be fruitful if they do take out the the uh, <clears throat> resistance. And that is a very strong bottom right there. <laughs> yeah, Luis. Oh my gosh. I think the swelling will go down by then. All right. So what is this? AMD. I'm not a fan of the sector because of all the headlines that they have. Um, but this is a potential um, meander higher. But it will require the it will require the market to also do something with positive. So what I think, what I think people should be looking for is this. The, the moving average is curling up. That means that moving averages are, are this chop. This is how they represent them. Depends on the number you choose. They, they take out all this chop and they put them in simple dots. So it simplifies us. If you look at these two lines, that's how the market is going. And if you start curling, curling up, that means all this chop is actually wants to start chopping this way. So it's easier to see the action. Uh, this is possible, although I would stop out below here because it could go to the high 30s, low 40s, which would be a uh, go in for me. I've, I haven't traded them yet. I haven't gone long them yet. Amgen, not much you can sue at, 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 say at this uh, time frame. Um, it is in the hands of the bulls, but I thought if I expanded longer term. See, again, I mean, what are you asking here? I don't understand. Are you asking to get long? Are you asking to short or to book? To get long, not for me. You missed it, dude. Again, TH, TH. I don't want to short it. It's in the hands of the bulls. I, I, if you force me to do anything, I'll buy a debit put spread out in time and see what, how it works. Amazon, um, I went long and I would go long. And if I sell a put, I wouldn't defend it. I would take the shares. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the company per my judgment. I know there are a couple of people in our group that pointed out the fact that the free cash flow situation looks suspect. It is red. It is negative. So make your own opinions on that. I have my own. I think the company is still the store to the world and it's just fine. The free cash flow situation, my opinion, not fact, it could be, I could be wrong, is that then they're blowing every penny they have to invent something. Don't know. Every time Amazon overspends and everybody talks about it, I remember Josh Brown on CNBC, I don't know, five years ago when it was 1600 You can't invest in it. Uh, the CEO told you it's a spending year. It's like, this is when you invest in it. When Amazon spends, it doubles in size. So think about the how they took the AWS. They owned the internet out of nowhere. Bookstore, store of everything, owner of internet. <laughs> and what oh and now a delivery service uh, anyway don't bet against it i would give them the benefit of the doubt uh, they could be at 111 in the next three weeks four weeks <laughs> oh, they're out of starbucks yikes how about the drone? Pretty soon you'll have a drone deliver a Starbucks for you. I make a joke about that all the time. It will become reality. Where's my drone? My coffee is late. Uh, triple bottom or trap door, whatever this is. RK. If you, ha if, if you take longs, you should stop out below 33 and a half. 
because you, it, it could go to 28, 27, 26. The problem with this this week, I think, was the, the, the likes of Roku. That's in there. So Twilio might be in there as well. Tesla is in there. So again, we go back to watching the mega caps, especially Tesla. Um, so this is a triple bottom, meaning it's a floor you can hang on to to get out of 40 and explode to 46. Or this is just a resting phase before they get um, they, they're consolidating to take the second leg lower. So if you lose this, exit. You don't know how deep they want to go. It could be here and stop. It could be down to 26 and you don't know. Um, Tesla will probably determine that I believe it's 11% of it, if not more, of the whole index. Uh, you take this out, you can get to here. So this chop is consolidation to start building an ascending channel or just let loose. So how do you deal with that? You put a tight stop. What does that mean? You put an alert that if it goes below here or here, choose a little buffer. You just close the position and you eat the loss, whatever it is. Your first loss is your best loss. That's what that is. Hard to put it in motion. Just pick a number and execute on it. And if you're wrong in hindsight, so be it. That's what professional traders do. They don't look back. They stuck to their system, and it worked most of the time, so they don't change it. American Express, you saw my trade. I caught the falling knife. It played out. Now I don't want to be long. It's stuck between resistance and support. That resistance up there, about 151 If you take it out, you can get like 8 or $9 out of it. But I'm happy I made 15%, 20%, whatever it was, 12%. We caught the falling knife easily. We didn't have to check on it. Uh, Boeing, uh, vulnerable from up here. It could be at 145 in the next couple of weeks. Buy the dip and then see if it come back to 165 or 162. I think 162 and a half will bring another $10 above that. But it's not an obvious entry point. Look left. Uh, Baba. Okay, so I'm still stuck long. I promised myself I wouldn't trade Chinese companies, and I did, and I won, and I overstayed my welcome, and then the headline from Xi comes out, and it falls here. So I thought I was dead in the water, and now I'm back to evenish green. I should get out. <laughs> Greed is a beautiful thing. So this is my proxy on the market. They showed tr good strength last week when the uh, other markets were not. So this is the put up or shut up moment. Remember I told you the moving averages curling up? They tried here and they failed. Uh, they didn't try here. They're trying again here. So are the moving averages curling up? If they are, then they start buying dips. And before you know it, you have a little climb. I will exit uh, soon. But I would not want to trade this sucker ever again after this because of the headlines that they are selling rallies. That is a fact. They are selling rallies for a long time. Look, this is not a chart you want to be involved with. As good as the company is, it is the most bizarre scenario ever, all because of political rhetoric. Okay, so I don't know what that is. Oh, Liberty Media. Eh, it's stuck. It has support, it has resistance. Um, are these the ones that own Formula One now? Is that the same company? Anyway, uh, what are you doing with this uh, stock? If you're invested in it, you should decide whether to fish or cut bait. I know nothing. The chart tells you nothing. You need to study the company. If I have risk in this one, I definitely would not add to it. Uh, Bitcoin, I already told you my thought. I'm long, I'm super profitable. As I mentioned last November, I thought we would crash down to 20. We did. I said I would load up. I did load up, but not all in because of somebody else's opinion kept me out. I wish I had lo loaded up all in, but I took enough to where this is a really good win. My biggest win of the year, in fact, in dollar terms. Um, and I, I'm locked, I, so I don't trade it. My goal is 45, 42 and above. So how will it happen? I think this week we have the opportunity to get to 25. If we do, we'll chop around there plus or minus 2,000, maybe three. And then the second level after that will be 33. And then the second level will be 40. Why am I looking at that 40? That's where the problem started, 46. 42 to 46. Anyway, I'm long Bitcoin. I'm staying long Bitcoin. And it's saying something about the market. This is risky stuff in the eye of the market. And it's basing 
even you know quote crap like doge which is not crap it's real bx stuck in muck it has support and it has resistance i don't think you can do anything into that um 96 oh back to bitcoin so the way to trade bitcoin for us is to use Beto. Because to me, the, the riskiest part of investing in crypto is where do you put your money? Like I have mine in crypto.com and I still hold my breath every time I log into it. And when it hangs up, it takes too long to, to, to log in. I'm like, this is the day I'm going to not be able to log into my account and be locked out. Um, well, you can circumvent that risk by uh, choosing to trade stuff that trades like stocks. And we have three or four of them. I know three off the top of my head. Bito, B-I-T-O. We've traded it. I've been selling puts. I'm not long Bito via sold puts. I do own Bito shares, as I've recommended, and they are very green. I also have, you can trade something called ETHE, which is a grayscale uh, tracker of Ethereum. Very strong ticker. And GBTC, the tracker from grayscale that tracks Bit Bitcoin. Those two do not have options, so you have to play with the actual stock itself. There are other things out there. Don't trade Mara because you want to trade Bitcoin or whatever those other junk stocks are. Just trade crypto, either through those stickers I told you or actual crypto. Anyway, this one has resistance and support. Caterpillar. So somebody asked me for a trade and I said Iron Condor would be fine. And um, so I, I do have that trade in my book and the credit cost spread side is getting under fire. It's at 240. And um, overall, the trade is not that bad because of the balance it's in. And uh, so I got a message from somebody that they, they said they took this, not that. They said this didn't fill. Um, so whether it filled on purpose, it didn't fill on purpose or not, doesn't matter. He or she, I think he has a situation on their hand. So what you need to do is reach out to me on Monday. If the delta of the sold call is still around 30 cents, 30 percent, 0.3, then I'm okay. You should keep an eye on it and say to yourself, I'm willing to take this much pain and then I'm out. You could roll it up for a debit. You could roll it up and out for even money to give yourself some breathing room. Rolling it up means I close it here and I reopen it here in the same time. Rolling it out and up is I close it here and I open it here. In essence, I'm saying, okay, I lost on this one. Let me close it and reopen the same style risk somewhere else where it has a better odds of success. So if I collected 50 cents to open it here and now it's a dollar, if I close it here and reopen it here and pay 50 cents or whatever, that means I'm saying, okay, I've given up. I'm trying to make money. I just want to get out with minimal damage. So let me move it up to here. Pay back everything I collected, maybe plus or minus a little bit, and uh, give myself better odds. So now you're defending a position that may, cannot make you money, which is good. If you do it here, it's cheaper because you're adding time to your risk. So that's why it's cheaper to move it here than to here. Moving it here probably costs. to nothing or maybe even as a credit just make sure you don't go into a uh, an earnings season with that um, I wouldn't sell a put spread right now to hedge that because it's pretty frothy I started with a dollar ten so my break-even point is of 241 okay CF industries boy so again I'm <laughs> I found this because I was doing the same scan as Accenture, ACN, and Accenture was a positive scan and this one was a really negative scan. So I took a bearish position and I didn't even realize they had earnings. That's how focused I was to the craft. And I got this and it paid me and I got out and it wasn't liquid. So I had to give up a few pennies, but it was a huge win. I think I want to redo the win again, try to redo it again, although it is not very liquid. So pick a monthly expiration, not a weekly. Um, I, I don't have, I don't want to be long this. If I'm long, I would book it because there's a scenario that says 76 in the next couple of months. That's down here. I can't guarantee you it will go there. But the first, the first drop I saw coming without knowing it was an earnings report. So, and then they bounced hard. So the, the setup reset itself to, to look exactly like it was before it, it, 
alerted. Okay, what is this? Charge point. Um, okay, so if it dips by the dip, if you want to hold it long, you should know that this is the place they're trying to recover. If they don't, every rally into this area will be met with sellers. So this is super important to hold. Otherwise, they're going down to here. So you should know that. Don't chase rallies. Use rallies to get out of trouble. Or buy the dips into here thinking that, okay, in the next two weeks or three weeks, they're going to probably recover. But the bears have it. Uh, it's not for me. Uh, charter communication. It's broken. <laughs> the opportunity lies right there. So if they can get above 380, they can probably get to 420. They're making progress here. CL Colgate, I'm assuming I wouldn't get long here. I would get long above here or a little below. 71 maybe and uh, 76 maybe. But man, Colgate? <laughs> old school, old school. If it falls below here, exit, exit, exit. Alert, alert. It shouldn't. Uh, if it gets here, it's a buyable dip with stops. If it gets here, it's a stronger bio, buyable dip with stops. Uh, oil, not for me. Of course, you can have headlines and manipulation take it to actually 105, maybe 110. But as a starting point, not for me. Those two arrows could happen in the next two weeks. Uh, Comcast, I don't know, stuck in muck, literally. It's stuck in muck. You have huge top on top of you. How are you going to get out of 34 now? And how are you going to be able to hold 28? Those are two legit questions. Costco. Well, they got money from me yesterday. I was saying here to the people in the room, hey, we got our 61 people. Hello. So I, when I was waiting before we got started here, I said I went to Costco to buy a couple of small things. I came out with a $500 bill because I bought two monitors. If you're looking for monitors, they have 32-inch curved Dell for 178 maybe 77 uh, they have a comparable Samsung as well. Also 32 inch, also curved. Why curved? It makes it only 28 inches wide physically. So you can put them side by side and not require a gigantic desk. Um, so I'm retiring 227, old 227 units that are going to go bye byes on Monday. Okay, I have not installed them. But Costco itself is a, a incredibly successful business it has fallen into a pivot zone so anything below 480 should be solid floor anything above five, 495 should be incredibly tough resistance if by some miracle we get to 511 it probably goes to 550 so there's nothing to do here except sell credit put spreads on the dips which i think we did yep credit put spread and i don't know why i have a credit call spread my trade played out I don't know if I want to repeat it. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Koopa. Avoid. It's one of those Twilio, Koopa, Zscaler. Avoid. Now, technically, it could get to 51. Um, but make sure that it's a, a uh, tactical trade. If I'm long Koopa and on this dip, I don't add. That's me. Unless I only took a partial position to begin with. And I'm just getting into my full size position. Study the company. Technically, you could get a balance. But I would stop out after X percent loss. Uh, Campbell Soup, this is a stock you buy and hold uh, forever. Uh, that's amazing. So it averted this disaster and went and made a new high. That is unbelievable. So you have two support zones. I don't know what to do with it. This probably will fall on a market rally. It's almost inverse the S&P. Let's test this theory. Almost, I said. I've seen it right, like here, makes, makes uh, the, the, the S&P rallies, it falls. Uh, here, S&P rallies, it falls. S&P rallies, I mean, it rallies, S&P collapsing. So it does serve almost like the VIX at times. So anyway, it has support here and here. And it does pay like 3% dividends. Uh, CRM, hold it for the long term. I saw something in the charts that I can't prove. But it could be back up here in the next three months or so. If I'm long, I'm not getting out of it. I think I have a credit put spread in it. This is the quarantine gaps. I mean, come on. I think it has a big swing up. I could hold shares. I could hold debit call spread for January. I can sell a credit put spread for 
Yeah, I think it reports in, in, in late November. So if you can get a credit put spread before then, otherwise make the credit put spread out to January as well. Serious logic, avoid. Uh, looks like a broken stock. Is it a broken company? I don't know. Um, so study the company. If it has a legitimate business and it's just struggling because of whatever is going on with semis, then this could be a nicely tradable bottom. But look, so was this, so was that, so was this. So just be careful. Uh, above 75 could get to 80 or 86. But you need warning one, warning two. This should be a good floor. And put stops. Avoid one of those Twilio things. Same comments I did about two stocks ago. What is a Koopa? Same thing. It just lost a ledge. I don't know where they're going to go with that. There's nothing recent to help you. And if you lose this one, good grief. Yeah, two digits. Uh, not for me. Credit Suisse. So I have to ask, are you invested in it? If you are, just pick your exit points. It seems to have extra risk than all other banks. Otherwise, why bother with it? It's not like it's going to make you a crap ton of money. It moves 50 cents this way or that way. So if you're actively trading it with shares, okay, I see it. For that purpose, you have sellers from 440 to 460. Any rally into that, I would get rid of my longs. Any dip into support, I will take longs with stops. I wouldn't invest in it. It's, it has issues, like fundamental issues. So why, why take them on? Maybe they overcome them, maybe they don't. So do your homework on that. Uh, Cisco, this was an incredible fail. It should have pretty good support. So if it falls into 42, it's a buy the dip opportunity for a swing back up. I said it was vulnerable the other day and it almost came to fruition, all of it. So if it rallies, it will continue to be vulnerable until they take this really bad fail, 46 and a half ish. And if it takes that out, then it gets to 50 plus. So buy the dip. Or whatever you do, put a stop. Who is this? CT. Oh, Cognizant. Yeah. Kind of like Koopa. What do you know? I don't know. This gap is suspect. What? Yeah. Not for me. But if you know the company and you want to take a risk and put a stop, by all means. Carvana. How many times did I say avoid, 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 avoid? How many times? Yes. Avoid. Avoid. This company could go bye-bye. The way they were burning uh, cash was insanely uh, risky. So now you can study the company. And if you want to take a risk on it, that's fine. But I would not touch it with, with anybody's money. Avoid. Yes, and look how much it fell. 39% after being ugly already. There's something wrong with that company. There's a couple of towers right next to my, not my house, around my neighborhood i can drive by them within 10 minutes and uh it's a freaking gimmick i mean nobody's gonna go buy one from a vending machine okay the delivery online i get it people do that but the vending machine kind of it's a gimmick but the my scary part was the um the the, ca the negative cash flow from operations that was the <laughs> it wasn't 10 feet the tower is huge uh, but anyway, the, the cash situation. In order to exist, they were burning through cash that they didn't have. Amazon is burning through cash, but the cash they generate. Anyway, 27 is your mark. 29 is your mark. 22 and a half is your mark, whatever this is. Camping World. This, if you're trading options on Camping World, you're making a mistake. This my homie. This is, uh, what's his name? Lamonis, right? So he's part Lebanese, so or something like that. Uh, not for me. It's not liquid. I've traded it for us before successfully, but the options were not liquid. Oh, wait, I went one extra. I should stop the recording and do another video. Hold on. Now we are live. Hello everyone, thanks for being here. This is the day we change clocks overnight. Okay folks, so, I only so have 30 people. So uh, we basically watched, I don't even know how long this was, but in 30 minutes. So that was one of the videos that Nick Shaheen does every Sunday for all the members.
And when it comes to trading, this helps a lot because when you do it on a Sunday, you basically get your basis covered so that when Monday comes, you can either adjust your portfolio or you can pretty much get us head start of what's happening. Steve, you're calling it right. Prep for the week. Now, keep in mind, who else in this world is going to even talk to you on a Sunday? Seriously. Only place you can go on Sunday that's open is Chick-fil-A and church. But you have Nick Shaheen every Sunday, every freaking Sunday. And on top of that, Monday to Friday. Okay? And you have him the entire day. It's not like you're only getting him for like, you know, two hours a day or, you know, like a, a minimal amount of time. Nick uh, started the chat room. When I launched the chat room with Nick, for you guys to know, it was only the chat room. Basically, it's it was only this, right? So, and, and actually, this is a new chat room. And I want to give a big shout out to uh, to Vin, Harvey, Neil, Tammy, everybody that's been working so hard to make this chat room what it is today. I have to give them a shout out, folks. I just can't, I, I, you know, like I have to let's go. Let's go. Damn, son, where'd you find this? So when it comes. All right, everybody. Sorry, I got disconnected. Um, I'm again, remember, I'm at Twin Peaks. So it's like, you know, the Internet is kind of off and on and off. Let me put on the uh, what I was showing you guys here. One second. I apologize for the Internet. I'm going to have Internet back on Tuesday. AT&T is hooking it up. Um, let me pull this up for you guys. One second. Okay, uh, can you guys see that? Can you guys see the chat room now? So, um, okay, super quick, super quick, right? So you have Nick's important messages. That's where Nick can post. Only he can post, nobody else can post there. And it's so easy because you can follow everything he's doing. But keep in mind, I want you to actually join the live session. So once you go in here, um, you just pop in here where it says live session, okay? And it's gonna have a link. It's, it's freeconferencecall.com. You download this thing and you put the password and you're in. And we're talking about like Monday to Friday, the entire day. There's nobody else that will give you so much time out of their life except Nick Shaheen. The commitment that this man has for his users is ridiculous. It, he just loves being there. As you can see, he's addicted to bang and all these, you know, energy drinks. <laughs> but it's really because he, he works so hard. So I feel for the guy. He's really working so hard for you guys, honestly. And I can tell you this because I'm from the inside. Like, I can see it. I launched the chat room with Nick. I know how it's evolved. And this whole chat room was how it all started. And then eventually, he added the live session. Just for you guys to know, the live session is something extra. It's really not part of the service. You know, it's really something that Nick does to help the traders that we have there. So if you do feel that you do want uh, Nick throughout the entire day, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, 8 to 5 p.m., you got to join, okay? And it's once you join the chat room, this live session is free, right? So there's no upsells or nothing like that. Once you join the chat room, you get everything, okay? And the main reason why I do like Nick Shaheen is because he's a straight shooter. 
he taught me a lot of things in life and a lot of things about options. And, you know, he's a great friend. And I can tell you there's a lot of people in there that, that also have built a good relationship with Nick because he's a real dude, you know? Like, he doesn't mince anything. And that's how you want it to be when it comes to trades. Like I was telling you before, um, <clears throat> if you're not aware of what's happening right now, um, you know, we're, we're in a pretty dire economic situation. Even though the job market is fine, quote, you know, quote unquote, the job market is okay. Everybody that has a job is struggling more than how they were two years ago. Why? Because cost of living is through the roof. Rent is through the roof. Food through the roof. Gas through the roof. Okay. In California, they're even sending checks out to people for gas. So um, life is not how it used to be three years ago. We probably might not go back to that, to how we were. And my only advice here is that you need to look out for yourself or join a community that looks out for you, for the little guy. Nobody cares about the little guy, only Benzinga. That's really why we're here. That's why people come to us. And again, this is for Joe, Brandy, Barnan. Again, this is really for the little guy. So when you come in here, right, when you come into the chat room, make sure that you go into the live session. The other thing that I'm going to say is that there's an inner circle chat, okay? And this is where everybody's posting. Everybody, okay? Nick, back and forth, Mr. Bionic. What's up, dude? If you're watching, give me a quick shout out. I signed this guy up. He's a great dude. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, you can see that Nick is definitely active, okay? You can see he's active. Someone's asking about the live session on Sunday. It's 10 a.m. Eastern. So, um, you can see there's a lot of content, okay? There's a lot of content, a lot of material. All this stuff is meant to help you. There is no way that you join this chat room and you leave a less smarter person. It's, unless you actually genuinely try. But, like, there's no way you don't learn anything about this chat room unless you actually try to not learn. Why? Because if you, if I mean, if you can't learn with somebody who's there the entire day with you, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 and Sundays, you know, like, th th that's a separate conversation, dude, you know? <laughs> but, like, this is... You have all the resources here. And out of all the chat rooms that we have here, out of every single thing I've launched with Benzinga here, I can tell you that this is the highest, highest cream of the crop thing you're going to find because the time commitment that Nick puts into it, nine to five the entire day. So if you like to talk about the Fed, if you like to talk about the economy, you can also do that there. Nick is your guy for that. And again, remember, turn off CNBC and turn on Benzinga, okay? That's my advice to you as a retail trader, because ultimately I want you to Google how does CNBC make money? You will not find anything. How does CNBC make money? Google that. You won't find anything. Why? It's covered under their umbrella. I don't want to get too deep into it, but you know who their sponsors are, right? Okay. So as the little guy, Rodrigo, I'm telling you that you have to take care of yourself. And Benzinga does that for you. Benzinga helps the little guy. That is who we are here for. That's who we launched this for, the chat room, because people love Nick so much that they wanted to get more and more and more from Nick. So um, if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask them, and I'll go over them here. If you want my honest opinion about anything, this is the time. Um, Steve B, prep for the week. Trading alone is not worth A. Hey, Steve, you get it. Deborah, good. it's always great to see you, Deborah. Just so I want everybody here to to show some love to Deborah because she has been in a recovery and she's a great person. She's been watching these sessions for like years and she's a great individual. So Deborah, uh, we all here wish you the best always. Okay. Um, and I always love that you come here and join. Daniel says, yes, thanks. Life happens for a reason. That's why it's called the challenge. Each stock moves based on human life chat. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. I believe in destiny. I believe in the law of attraction. If you ever, if you haven't read that book, read it. It's called the law of attraction. It's a great book. I read it in college 10 years ago. It changed my life. Be positive about everything. Uh, Steve says, Rodrigo, did I understand the Sunday morning session is recorded? Yes, it is my brother. Every, the, all the Sundays. That's what we just watched. That's what we were watching right now that I showed y'all the video. Um, this thing right here. So uh, this is one of them, but there's like three videos. As you can see, it's video one, video two, video three, 
So this is only video one, but there's three videos of this. It goes on for like two hours. And I promise you, when you join this chat room, you will not be disappointed like if you would, if you'd be a New York Jets fan, okay? This chat room will definitely change your life as a trader, okay? And as an individual. It's definitely so different from what anything you've seen out there. And how do I know this? Because I've seen stuff out there. I've tried stuff out there. I'm a trader myself. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a reporter. I'm not reading from a teleprompter. Everything I say comes from my heart. So I'm telling you guys that if you want to join the chat room, if you're a retail trader, give it a shot. you got 30 days. Worst case scenario, you get your money back. Wow. That's not even a, that's not even, I shouldn't even call it worst case scenario. That's best case, you know, like best case scenario, you come in, you make money, right? But like worst case scenario, you just make, you just get your money back, right? So, um, and keep in mind, in the middle of a recession, the fact that we're still doing money back guarantees says a lot. And even though a lot of people want to take it off, a lot of people here don't want to have the money back guarantee. I'm pushing for the money back guarantee because I know how the industry is. And I know that some of you guys might have been, um, might have joined a bad, a bad uh, service. And maybe this is the first time you joined Benzinga and you want to test it out. And I totally get where you're coming from. And that's why I extended the seven day money back guarantee to 30 days because I understand the market out there. I understand there's a lot of, um, you know, places out there that don't really care about you. But as somebody that trades and has been through those bad uh, situations, I try to bring that into Benzinga so that you guys can have a good experience here. And that's really my goal here. I'm only here to help you make money. I'm not here for nothing else. Like that is the main reason why I'm here talking to you right now. So if you have the opportunity to be listening to this right now, understand that you're sitting at the table with the right people. You are already here, okay? Now you just have to focus, okay? Forget about everything else. Forget about all these additional dumb newsletters you have, okay? Forget about all that. All you need to focus on is the live room with Nick Shaheen, and that's all you need, okay? Maybe you're overloaded with information, and you, you don't even know what to cut out and what to cut in. And I'm, my honest advice, cut everything except Benzinga. Benzinga is all you need, literally. That's all you need. Um, Steve B, excellent church, you know, or recovery from the other night. Um, no, Steve, no, it's something different. Um, <laughs> um, Jets are tied with the Bills right now. Uh, yeah, they're at, well, yeah, they're actually tied right now. Yeah, actually. Um, and also, I want to give a big shout out to Andrew Weiss, my boy here at Benzinga. It's his birthday. So everybody wish Andrew Weiss um, a good birthday. I'm going to throw in his cell phone number in the chat so everybody no, i'm just kidding <laughs> but uh but yeah everybody wish andrew weiss a good birthday uh he's been here with benzinga for like freaking like six years he's a great dude i love the guy he's a good friend of mine um and uh, he put some money on lsu winning against bama and he actually rocked it so if you guys want, want a bookie talk to weiss okay um deborah i wish it was night after <laughs> dennis hi steve b lol i meant good it's recorded yeah steve good to see you so all right folks we've been here chatting for quite a long time um i don't want to bore you guys with the same thing but again keep in mind nobody in life is going to have your back like you right nobody cares as much as your money about you so this chat room is built around you all right this is all about you the user okay if you like it you enjoy it you come in there, you got 30 days to try it out. I mean, I don't know anything out there that I can try for 30 days and get my money back. I just really don't. So um, if you have this opportunity, right, with us here, join it. Be part of the community. I'm, tr I'm telling you, you're not going to regret it. Joining this chat might be the best thing you've ever done in your entire trading career. Okay? Entire trading career. Yes, Dennis, I don't have that with me, but you can email me and I can send it to you, dude. Um, Steve B, you have a sec. Please give my email a quick look. Steve, you got 30 days. I, I, I'll look at your email. No worries. But but you got 30 days to figure it out. You can join. That money is going to be sitting there waiting for you, okay? If it works out, great. You keep making money. You keep learning. And you keep doing what you're doing as a trader. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. You get a refund, you get all your money back. At the end of the day, we lose with that. Like, So as a business, we have to make sure that we're giving you a high quality service if you have 30 days to try it out, right? Doesn't that make sense? So 
that's why I put the 30 days. I extended them because it used to be seven days, Steve. And I made it 30 just for you, just for people like you that really are on the fence. Because I know, again, that there's a lot of bad services out there that really don't care about you or me or anybody that joins. And this is why we're different. This is why Benzinga does things differently because we care about the individual retail trader, okay? Madison says, I closed Chrome. I'm really sorry about the noise. I'm really sorry. Uh, Madison says, I closed Chrome and reopened it. It still says, sorry, this product cannot be purchased. Should I email you? Madison, yes, please email me. If anybody here has issues purchasing, um, please send me an email and I will call you to get it set up. But keep in mind, it probably can be fixed if you maybe refresh it, Madison, or close it. Just try closing it and opening it again. I'm gonna post the link uh, for you uh, one more time. One second, give me a quick, a quick moment here so I can put it there for you. Zach, yo, I totally forgot about the YouTube chat. Um, Twin, <laughs> Yousef, yo. <laughs> Zach, thank you. We, okay, good, good, good. Sunhawk International. Uh, Tony Roses, is Rodrigo in South Florida? Hell yeah, dog. I'm in Hollywood, Florida. Come see me. Um, Milky Fade, happy birthday, Andrew Weiss. Yes, everybody wish Andrew Weiss a beautiful birthday, okay? Um, I was going to put his phone number there, but no, it would be too much. But it would be kind of funny if everybody just texted him now and be like, yo, happy birthday, bro. Um, so... Um, Madison, let me know if that works for you. Just close it out and try opening it again. I'm going to post the link here for you really quick. Um, some, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, sometimes that happens. I, it's not the first time I get that. But um, if anybody does have issues signing up, put it in the chat or just email me. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, big shout out to Andrew. And let's go ahead and get back here to where we were. So again, folks, $31 trillion, $31 trillion effing dollars in national debt, highest in history, highest interest rate since like 2007, okay? So servicing that debt is ridiculously impossible. And we still have all these social programs that we're doing. So my suggestion, if things, you know, if things hit the, you know, if you know what hit the, hits the fan, you want to be able to, know, to make money on your own. We all know we can't trust anybody at this point, right? You can't trust the Fed. You can't trust the government. You, you just can't, right? Because they just want to manipulate you. You have to take care of your own finances. That's how it's always been. So this chat room is built around you helping yourself. We want to put money in your pocket. That's what it's all about. It's not like, you know, like you join the chat room and that's it. 1782 for the entire year, unless you want to do the lifetime. And so Madison is saying, uh, it jumps to that product cannot be purchased page as soon as I log in. So Madison, try doing it without logging in because it might uh, it might have to do with something that you already have a membership, Madison. Um, but I remember you. I think I've I think I've seen you here several times on the sessions. So um, big shout out to the Dolphins that just won. I know Money Mitch is going to be happy about that. Um, so Madison, try doing that. If not, send me an email, no worries. And 18 hunts to join the group. Hassan, I think that's better than blowing up your account. Uh, I've blown up my account twice when I didn't have a, a room or a community. And from the 8,000 traders that I've talked to since I've been here at Benzinga, blowing up your account is very, very feasible and realistic if you are not trading with the right community. Should I, I mean, and I have to be honest, I have to be real about this with you. You know, like there's retail traders that have been trading for 20 years, losing money for 20 years. Okay. You understand that? Like how long it is. So ultimately the goal here is to like not blow up your account. The goal is for you to learn and make money while you learn instead of having to blow up your account, gambling and betting on the market, because that's what most of the retail traders do. Let's be honest. All right. And I'm a retail trader, too. So. Um, <laughs> so. So, yeah, Hassan, and you do have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if it doesn't work out for you or anybody, you get all your money back. Right. No harm, no foul. That's it. You move on. That's life. Um, Daniel 
Will there be any extension? No, there are no extensions. You already have 30 days. That's an entire month. That's one twelfth of a year, okay, for you to figure this out. I'm pretty sure if you're with somebody the entire day, Monday to Friday, you will figure it out pretty quick if it's for you or not. So um, if anybody does have questions, okay, before we do wrap this up, we've been here for a long time and, um, you know, we've been here for a long time, period. So um, if you do want to join, I do want to make sure that you can get in. But also know that like tomorrow, we're going to be hitting the market strong very early in the morning. Um, the Fed just reported 75 basis point increase last Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I don't remember the day, but um, there's a lot of things happening in the market. If you, and if you don't know what's going on with the market, then you need, you need to start getting with the program. Uh, unless you want to keep losing money. If you want to make money, join the room. If you don't want to make money, don't join the room. Because that's what we're all about there, okay? If you're here to learn and make money, join the room. That's what we're here for. That is literally the only reason that I'm here doing this for you guys. Literally. And there's hundreds of people that email me every day thanking me for joining the chat room and all this stuff. And again, since I launched the chat rooms here like over a year ago, I know that people's lives have changed and they've told me this. I'm not going to like share, you know, give you a copyright of the email of anything, but I can tell you 100% that a lot of people have improved and just become better traders when it comes to their own account and understanding what's happening in the markets. Um, Steve, I appreciate your time too, bro. Thanks for being here too. Just like I'm here, you're here with me. Uh, Daniel, can you please reach out to me or send out? Okay, all right. Um, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. For anybody, including Daniel, okay, anybody that wants to join, the link is in the chat. The link is in the chat, okay? Daniel, I need you to click that, okay? Click that, sign up. I want to see you in the chat tomorrow. Um, my life has been an outside. <laughs> Daniel, hey, life can get pretty weird sometimes, dude. Um, your phone got hacked, compromising control. Sorry to hear that, but I can tell you that, I mean, that's going to pass. But ultimately, financial stability is the most important thing in your life. Financial stability is the most important thing in anybody's life here. Even though you want to live a nice life and you want to have a good family and all that stuff, you can't do that without money. Okay. Money's not the most important thing in life, but it's definitely important. I'd say top three in life. So being in a chat room, being in a community that focuses and helps you do that is, is already a step up in life. Okay. If you have the ability to join the chat room, do it. I promise you won't regret it. You're going to learn so much more than options. We have people there that run several businesses. I know people there that are like actually like millionaires that are in the chat room trading and doing all this stuff. And they have different types of businesses and people just want to make money at the end of the day. If you put your money in a savings account and let's say you get a 3% APY on a damn CD, you're still losing money, bro. You're still losing money because inflation is at 8%. So you're already down what well, you're going to get. You're still negative 5% because of inflation. So understand that your money sitting right now is a sin. If you leave your money sitting in a bank account, you're just losing money every day because of inflation, because cost of living is going up. And once prices go up, they don't, they don't come back down. Okay. They don't come back down. Rent is not going to come back down. Okay. I live in Miami, Florida. Do you think rent's coming down here anytime soon? No, rent's only going up. Okay. Everything that's, everything is going to get more expensive. I'm being real with you. The, the world living, everything you buy is going to get more expensive. And this might be the, 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 what you need to hear. Okay. But the world's going to get tougher and living is going to get tougher and you have to get smarter. And by that, I mean, you actually have to find ways to make more money. Okay. That is why I think you should join the chat room. Um, Daniel says, that's why I've had so much extraordinary experiences and, and extravagant gifts from all of our planets, especially God and heaven. Yes. Yes. Love God in heaven. Daniel, I love you. Um, okay, folks. So we've been here for a while. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. We've had a great time. I want you guys to join the chat room. Uh, Dana Green is a, okay, me, Wildflowers, resend link to join Nick's options. I will send it here. If you guys have questions, like post the questions, you know, because I'm just talking here by myself. But if, if you have any questions about anything, post it and I'll be more than happy to um, answer them. Um, green is an oxygen. Any other stem from green? Yes, the, the, world, the world is heaven. Yes, the, the earth is heaven. Absolutely. Um, so the link to join is in the chat. I'm going to put the contact there if you do want to join. 
Um, two is top priority, entire world. Yeah, I say money would be three. I say uh, I say friends, family, and then money. Friends, family, and money are the most important things in life. But yeah, I mean, but if you have money, you're not gonna be happy. Trust me, money does not make you happy. Um, you you'll find that out. Um, you'll find that out in life that money is worth nothing if you have no friends or family, unfortunately. Um, but at the same time, you need money to pay for your bills and support your family and all that stuff. So I think that it, you know, it, you have to take it into consideration too, but don't make it everything you live for. Um, Daniel, that's why we have day and night. Yes. Uh, me, wildflowers, link is not working. Reset password did everything. Make me happy. I will make you happy. Don't worry. Uh, there is only two. If, if let three involve, it's complete. Yes. I, I agree with you, Daniel. So, um, okay. All right. A lot of, for some reason, some people are having issues with the checkout. I don't know why. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a suggestion. And if it doesn't work, email me. Okay. Okay. Um, close the tab, sign out, uh, me wildflowers. If you know how to do it on incognito, if you even know what that is, like incognito tab on Google Chrome, do it. Um, and if that doesn't work, don't worry. I'll, I'll give you a call and I'll set it up for you. But I want to give everybody a big shout out, a big thank you for being here. It's been an amazing session. I apologize for the noise. I recently moved to a new apartment and I don't have internet till Tuesday. So I have to be doing the session from Twin Peaks, which I've, for some weird reason, they let me do it here. And I've been doing it for years here when I needed to. So, um, so I apologize for the noise. Yeah, me wildflowers. I'll I'll be here. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Um, if it if it doesn't work, you can like I'll still be here for you. Okay, um, Daniel, please. Uh, you know, money motive can't be the worst ever. Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying. Heart heart's interest is the most important and always priority entire of the world. Yes, love makes the world go around, but also money makes the world go around too. So. It's one of those things, Daniel. You need it, but you can't be too addicted to it because it's not going to... You need it when you're alive, but you can't take it when you die. So that's what, that's, that's what I mean with it. Um, all right, folks. I think we had a great session here. PDX, I love you too. You're welcome. Have a great day, brother. Um, make sure that you join the session. If you have any questions, you can reach out. You got my email. You got my contact. You can hit me up. And obviously, call me if you want to join. Don't call me with... you know. Don't email me spam or nothing like that. Just uh, if you want to join or have questions on the chat room, you know where to contact me. Let me put it one more time uh, in this in the session there. All right. OK, last call, last call. If anybody has another question, this is last call. OK, before I do shut this whole thing down, if anybody has another question, let it know. Damn, Jets won. That's crazy. That's crazy. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen Monday? Um, so I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay, on Monday. If you have any questions on joining or if for some reason the checkout doesn't work, call me, email me. I'm going to be working the whole day. I work like I work seven days a week pretty much, like probably working like 15 hours a day because I believe in this. I believe in the community. I believe in you guys. I believe in me. I believe in what we're doing here. And that's why I do this. You know how many people would just go off on the Sunday and do whatever they want? And here we are here helping you trying to make money. Like, who the hell does that, right? So, um, again, thank you guys for being here. Big shout out, uh, Santana. Thanks for the freebies, man. I promise to pay when I... Yo, Santana, hit me up, dude. You're a great dude. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe. Happy trading. I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Get ready for tomorrow. It's going to be a packed, packed day. And I got nothing else for you guys. Go Tigers. All right. Go Tigers. Go Saints. And we'll see you guys tomorrow in the chat room. All right. Have a great day, folks.